and the South Carolina Gamecocks hosting Neilon Green and the Clemson Tigers. For both men and both teams, the postseason starts in minutes. It is Clemson against South Carolina, minutes from now here on ESPN2. A win today for the Clemson Tigers, and that'll bring them a giant step closer to a bowl bid. But a loss, and their season is over. So that only intensifies today's showdown with their bitter rival, the University of South Carolina, in what is a territorial war for 365 days of bragging rights in the state. If the Gamecocks are to keep their bowl hopes alive, they must win tonight. So coming up is South Carolina and Clemson, bowl hopes and bragging rights on the line. y'all and welcome to Columbia, South Carolina. We've got Tigers and we've got Gamecocks. And they first started playing this game back in 1896 as part of the South Carolina State Fair and it costs two bits to get in back then. In this state, you are either born a Gamecock fan or a Tiger fan. There is no negotiation through life. It's one or the other. And so life as we know it in the state of South Carolina for the next three to three and a half hours is gonna come to a grinding halt. I'm Charlie Snyder along with Todd Christensen. In the last six meetings, the road team has won every single time. If Clemson wins tonight, they will go bowling. If South Carolina wins, a bowl is only a possibility. So for Tiger coach Tommy West, a third straight bowl appearance is on the line tonight. Very impressive. Clemson has been very successful over the last couple of years with Tommy West at the helm. They came within a touchdown of defeating both Florida State and North Carolina. But one of the things they've been very dependent upon is their ability to procure turnovers from the opposition. And frankly, this year they have struggled. You can see right there their turnover margin is in the negative integers. That's why it's so surprising that they have a winning record at all at 6-4. and four. But to rectify that situation, they want to put the ball in the hands of their all-time leading rusher this evening, Raymond Priester. Raymond Priester over the last two campaigns has averaged over 1,300 yards a year. This year his carries are down because they've been trying to accentuate the passing game. But Charlie, for them to be successful tonight, look for Raymond Priester to have somewhere between 25 and 35 carries. Priester had a sprained ankle last week. He is apparently healthy tonight. And like Tommy West, 43-year-old Brad Scott, the head football coach, of South Carolina is in his fourth season, and tonight he is going with a redshirt freshman at quarterback, Vic Penn. Well, Anthony Wright, their starting quarterback, went down with a knee injury against Tennessee. How would you like to be a redshirt freshman? And the first two games you participate in are against Tennessee and Florida. Certainly the youngster is going to struggle as a result, and here as you look at his drive chart, that reveals that very fact. But one of the things that he has, great leadership abilities, the team rallies behind him, but Charlie, certainly the youngster is going to have to have some big plays for the Gamecocks to win tonight. We talk about the intensity of this rivalry in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the tiger, is the head football coach's wife. You're looking at Daryl Scott. She is the wife of Brad Scott. She will be watching the game in her booth. Next to her will be a whole collection of Clemson Tiger fans, and in that booth will be the governor of the state of South Carolina. We'll be watching all of them tonight, and we'll be talking to the governor now with John Salisbury down on the field. John. Thanks, Charlie. We are with Governor David Beasley, and you know, Governor, you seem destined for politics from the start. Three years at Clemson, undergraduate degree from South Carolina, a law degree from South Carolina, and an honorary doctorate. Now, you got a big decision to make tonight. I thought at birth you were supposed to choose one or the other. Well, it's going to be an exciting night because there's no question you can sense the excitement all over this stadium. And I don't know whether I should put the Clemson hat on, the Carolina hat on. I think tonight I'm going to put the old ESPN hat on. There you go. Now you talk about this rivalry. What a great rivalry here in the South. You've got to be very proud. They're expecting the largest crowd ever here tonight. This is a great game tonight because I tell you, both teams didn't perform like they wanted to this season. So all the bragging rights are tonight. Whoever wins tonight determines what we brag about for the next year. So it's going to be one great game. Well, which leads me to my next question. You're in the booth right next to Daryl Scott, which is Coach Brad Scott's wife. Who you go to church with? Who are you rooting for tonight, Governor? Well, I'll tell you, I'll sit Brad and I go to church together. And and uh, whoever wins, I'm pulling for them. But no, no joke, we're pulling for both teams. I hope both teams play well. Ask me any question, but don't ask me that question. <laughs> Guys, he also handles the media pretty well, too. Charlie, back to you. 
He had his tap shoes on, didn't he? The, the governor of the state of South Carolina. We've got some serious college football coming up next. And this joint is jumping. It's all anybody's been talking about in the state of South Carolina for the past 364 days. This rivalry is now pretty near 100 years old, and the weather couldn't be any better. 62 degrees. We had rain the past 24 hours, but it has cleared out. Wind should not be a factor at all. South Carolina won the toss, and like we have seen so often in college football this year, they have deferred, and Clemson will receive. Tommy West at the age of 43, now in his fourth season at Clemson. Last year, he went to the Peach Bowl. The year before that, he went to the Gator Bowl. And in all likelihood, he's got a Peach Bowl appearance awaiting should he win tonight. Brad Scott, on the other hand, he out of Florida State in his fourth season at South Carolina. He was the offensive coordinator for Florida State for four years prior to coming here. And he has turned this program into a very solid one indeed. Lost last week, 48 to 21 to Florida. They were in the game up until the fourth quarter. Lost to Tennessee, 22 to seven. In fact, all five of South Carolina losses this year have come to teams inside the top 25. Georgia, Mississippi State, Auburn, Tennessee, and Florida. This series, Clemson has owned. And what is most remarkable about this most intense of rivalries, the road team has won each of the last six games. Clemson has won the last four in Columbia. It has been 10 years since South Carolina has managed to win at home against Clemson. And so it's the Gamecocks and the Tigers. A perfect setting indeed. Tony Horn and Antoine Edwards are standing deep. And Steve Florio will have the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. And we are ready to go in what is going to be the largest crowd in the history of the University of South Carolina. Antoine Edwards. Still on his feet and finally down at about the 33-yard line. Offensively for Clemson. Raymond Priester, we told you he came in with a gimpy ankle. Tommy West says if he can get 25 carries tonight, he'll win the game. Tony Horn is a very tough hombre. He's not afraid to go over the middle. He is their leading receiver. The offensive line anchored by Bundren and Roundtree, each making their 45th consecutive start. And they are seniors. This could be their last game for the Clemson Tigers. And this the first play of the game with Priester and Jameis Austin in the I formation behind Neilan Green. It's an end around. Tony Horn gets nothing. Kevin Brooks, the quarterback, made the tackle. Defensively for South Carolina, look for John Abraham. He's a cat quick defensive end at 235 pounds. He's got six and a half sacks on the season. Shane Burnham at middle linebacker is the son of the defensive coordinator Wally Burnham. And the safeties, Washington and Freeman, are the two leading tacklers for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Second down and 10. No gain on the trick opening play. Priester is now flat. And Javis Austin is across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. A pickup of four on the play. Good call by Clemson to put themselves in a makeable third and middling. Certainly they thought that they were going to get more out of that trick play, but give South Carolina credit. They were waiting on it. Austin, the freshman, is the heir apparent to Raymond Priester as the 20 to 30 carry feature back for Clemson. Wally Burnham is the defensive coordinator closest to that stanchion there. Chewing on the gum. And his son Shane is the middle linebacker, number 52. It is third and six. And here's Neilan Green's first pass of the night. Over the middle, and it's complete to Tony Horn at the 45-yard line, and that's the first first down of the ball game. One of the things that's impressive about Tony Horn is his ability to come back to the football. Arturo Freeman right here, number 12, is going to step up, and he's going to see exactly how the play transpires. It looked for a second there. He might be in a position to pick the ball off, but Horn puts his 190 pounds between Freeman and the football and is able to come up with a first down. As Charlie documented, 
Horn is not afraid to go across the middle and here's somebody for the opportunity to play on Sunday scouts love to see somebody with that kind of courage out of the eye formation first and ten plays it at their own forty five. Raymond Priester gets nothing. Well, maybe he gets a couple on the play. Arturo Freeman is there to make the tackle. Freeman, the second leading tackler on the team, also with six interceptions, certainly going to be a, a, an all league performer. He steps up, and this is by design, as the defensive coordinator Wally Vernon pointed out. He has to put eight and nine in the box and start to play the game the way the game is played currently in contemporary college football, i.e., Pressing on the outside and forcing people to beat him with their quarterbacks. So Freeman and Washington, the safeties, are likely to make the bulk of the tackles for South Carolina tonight. Second down and six. Green throwing long, completing it to the 30-yard line. Brian Wofford. A pickup of 21 yards on the play. Two man pattern play action had what he wanted man coverage and Wofford runs an excellent corner out you can see so good that he's able to hang on to it. Take a look at the move to the inside he's going to put on on Brooks and then come back to the outside turns him around completely and you can see the ball is a little bit underthrown. But Wofford has run such a good route they can afford the luxury of jumping and cushioning the football. First and ten from the thirty. Right up the gut, Raymond Priester gains maybe a yard on the play. Now let's go to Mike Adamley. Washington State and Washington. If UCLA wins and Washington State wins, they go to the Rose Bowl. Ryan Leaf going up top. This good for over 50 yards. And Washington State hanging on. Washington, though, with the ball down 10, Charlie. Mike Adamley does a very good Carl Ravage. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 30. Busted play, and Neilon Green's going to make something out of it. Green wrestled out of bounds at the 17 yard line, a pickup of 13 on the play. Charlie, you're right. He made an awful lot out of that. It was a misdirection. The idea was to run the option, but the back goes the other direction. You can see right there the fake, and nobody is there. Green has always been somebody who has been elusive. Now watch at the end of the play. I think Brooks got away with one here. Helmet to helmet, three yards out of bounds. That should have been a flag. Instead, it is a first down for the Clemson Tigers. And the line of scrimmage is a 17-yard line. Priester and Austin in the eye formation. Raymond Priester right up the cut to the five-yard line. By Neilon Green. Good lead block by the fullback coming, coming right at you. Priester is somebody who you got to give a lot of credit to. A guy who was an all-star the last couple of years, 1,300 yard plus rusher. This year is the all-time leading rusher at Clemson. He's been bounced around, played some fullback, comes in the slot, has done a lot of different things, has not been afforded the opportunity to be the main guy for them. Nonetheless, he has not complained. Great team player, as the coaches acknowledge. First and goal from the six. Martin in motion. Pitch out. Priester gets nothing. He'll lose a couple on the play. One of the things that South Carolina has done over the last couple of years is certainly improved against the run. You can see that they have improved about 56 places from two years ago and give, give defensive coordinator Wally Burnham a lot of credit for that. That and the fact that South Carolina as we mentioned earlier in this drive has been much more cognizant of the fact they need to crowd the line and not afford other teams the chance to run over them. Brad Scott can only hope his defense holds on second and goal from the eighth. Fumble! Recovered by Green. It'll be third down and goal. They're going to run the option. They're going to run the option to the right side and appear that Green might have stepped out just a little bit quickly. There it was. He came out a little bit quickly, got the ball off his fingertips, but fortunately the Tigers were able to recover. Now third down. Look for Horn here somewhere in the middle of the field to get an opportunity with him as the inside receiver. See if they can isolate him in single coverage. Tommy West. Milan Green is one of 19 seniors. And so is Tony Horn, who could be playing their last game for Clemson tonight. There's Green. He's still got it. Green is cut 
down at the three. That was an outstanding open field tackle on the part of Corey Atkins. Green, de Green decided, he decided at some point that this is what he's going to do. Take a look at the play action here. People get fooled. Now he goes out. Is he going to throw? He knows he's only got one guy to beat, and that's Atkins. Atkins steps up. Hel he puts the helmet right on the hips. Well, that's a good job in the open field because Green is certainly elusive. A very good runner. Credit Atkins with being at the right place. A 20-yard field goal try with a pretty sharp angle for David Richardson, who is 10 out of 11 this year. And now 11 out of 12. So Clemson strikes first. Three nothing. It's South Carolina's turn when we come back. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Honda. Vehicles designed to help simplify your life. And by Outback Steakhouse for a nauseous good time over an awesome steak. Get to Outback Steakhouse. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. So now, how do the South Carolina Gamecocks respond on their first series? As Clemson scores the field goal, 20 yarder by David Richardson. After 12 plays and 64 yards, it took six minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. I wonder if this is one of those times, Charlie, where you second guess yourself in terms of deferring, because certainly now Clemson, you know, yes, they brought some people with them from Clemson, but the majority of the people here in the 83,000 plus are wearing garnet and black. And certainly they've been taken out of it early. I think that this is really a boon for Clemson, whether they scored or not, just the fact that they were able to drive as far as they did. I have never really been clear on that philosophy of deferred. I think the idea is that the offenses start cold, but certainly Clemson's did not, despite the fact that they didn't do anything with that initial reverse. Give Green credit. Did a great job engineering that drive. Who Williams is standing deep. He's got a gimpy knee, but he is the fifth leading kickoff return man in the country, and he's going to come out. And it was a mistake. Gets to the 15. And that's where South Carolina will take over, led by their freshman quarterback, Victor Penn, making his second start. He is replacing Anthony Wright, who blew out a knee against Tennessee. The receivers, Zola Davis and Kerry Hood. The tight end is Trevin Matthews. And on the offensive line at right tackle is 260 pound Jason Lawson, who will be doing some time at tight end tonight as well. And so here is Penn with Troy Hambrick, the single setback. First play from scrimmage for South Carolina. Penn's going to throw it. A completion down to the 19 yard line to Zola Davis, a pickup of about five on the play. Defensively for Clemson. Lorenzo Bromel, native of the Bronx, he's got six sacks and he will become charging at Victor Penn tonight. Anthony Simmons, he has making is making his 33rd consecutive start, their leading tackler, and Michael Allen has been scorched at the cornerback slot in the last three weeks, and he is expected to get exercised tonight. And here is Hambrick. And here is Hambrick all the way across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. A pick up a 14 on the play. Robert Carswell, the strong safety, made the tackle. Troy Hambrick last year had 135 yards against Clemson. You can see right here at the point of attack, there's Jason Lawson, the tight end. Watch how he seals the corner. He's able to bounce in, cut outside. Look at that. What a great job. Tackle comes around, and Hambrick, as we mentioned, had a tremendous game against Clemson last year. Only 100 carries this year, averaging 4.7 a carry. Many people feel like he should be a star, but thus far, hasn't been able to pick his holes particularly well. You just got a quick look at Lawson, who is starting at one position, and now playing a tight end. And here's a long pass for Penn, and it's incomplete. Intended for Carey Hook all the way down to the 15-yard line. The question coming into the game was the arm strength of Victor Penn. No question now. No, that was a good throw, and I think that's a very catchable ball. Watch the watch he feels from the backside the pressure steps up and throws the post. This is right on the money. Hood's got to come up with that ball. That was a beautiful throw. Look as he steps up, he feels the pressure. Now he launches the throw. Takes a shot at the end, but he put that ball right on the money. You can tell he knows it's good and, and he gets excited, but he doesn't realize that the ball had fallen. So on second down and ten. Hambrick. Gets just a couple of yards, and that's about all. Now, Carl Ravage. Carl. 
All right, Charlie, in Seattle, big doings. Washington State and Washington in this game was dominated by the Cougars. But Brock Hewitt, little dump off, and watch Mike Reed get inside the 10 and then start pounding people. 31-28, Cougars hanging on. They're just starting to fourth. Those ball implications in that one. I'm really surprised. I thought Washington was going to beat them decidedly at home. Give Washington State a lot of credit. And now let's go downstairs to Sean Salisbury. There's Sean. Yeah, Charlie, uh, you, talk, you saw Victor Penn challenge Antoine Edwards, number one in the corner of Clemson. Well, offensive coordinator John Eason told us yesterday that they were going to challenge him because he noticed in film stiff hips by Edwards. He said that he doesn't come out of the break very well, and you can turn him. That's exactly what they did. They should have had a completion because Penn put the ball right on the money. Look for that to be challenged to the post a lot of times where he makes him change his direction on a regular basis tonight. Carolina will challenge him all night. All right, that is Antoine Edwards, number one, and just now getting up off the field and injured and being helped off the field is Robert Carswell who made the tackle and Carswell appears to be in significant discomfort. Well Antoine Edwards is a converted safety. He's not normally a cornerback and that's a difficult conversion to make in the middle of the season. It's very astute on the part of Sean. 205 pounds is kind of big for a corner. On third and eight. First down South Carolina. Zola Davis. Zola Davis in his freshman year had 58 catches for 915 yards and nine touchdowns and everybody since that time has been wondering why can't he put together those big numbers again he hasn't been able to do that and a lot of the reason for that is because of the coaches say maybe his work habits aren't what they should be this year in particular though they say he's been making the effort running the hard routes doing the things necessary for him to get back it's just that with with the development of Jamel Kelly, he does not have the numbers he's had in the past, but he's playing a lot better. Even so, he's the second leading receiver on this team in South Carolina on the move. Here's the pitch out to Hambrick. Hambrick's got some room. Hambrick is going to go. He is going to score the touchdown. 54 yards. Troy Hambrick, his fourth touchdown of the season. And Carolina leads 6-3. The blocking at the point of attack was outstanding for South Carolina. And I've got to be thinking, Charlie, that if I'm Troy Hambrick, I wish every game was against the Clemson Tigers. Look at the blocking at the point of attack. He misses the one guy, and look at that. Look at nothing but black shirts. The run support on the part of Clemson there was absolutely atrocious. And Hambrick had to make one move, and then he goes the distance. And now the extra point, Steve Florian. 7-3 South Carolina. Well, Victor Penn is somebody that engineered this particular drive, and maybe he didn't make any throws, but he made the pitch, and right now he's on top, 7-3. One of the things that happens here is that South Carolina does a great job of, as the coaches say, getting a hat on a hat. The free safety makes a bad choice and gets caught up in here. And the result is, is that Hambrick is able to go the distance. Good pitch by Pim, but right here, misses one tackle, nobody's left. Edwards tries to run him down from the backside, but it just isn't going to happen. Good job at the point of attack by the line, particularly the left side of the line for the South let's Carolina go, Gamecocks. Troy Hambrick, who had a 75-yard touchdown run against Clemson last year. 54 yards on this one. This is the longest touchdown run of the season for South Carolina. And the Gamecocks lead it 7-3. to three. Javis Austin. Austin nearly circled the corner and gets out to nearly the 30-yard line. <laughs> NFL Prime Monday, tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Time, immediately following SportsCenter with highlights, analysis, and, of course, soundtracks. And then on ABC Monday Night Football, an AFC Western Division showdown. It's the Raiders and the Denver Broncos next Monday night. 9 Eastern on ABC. Was that Elvis you were impersonating there? <laughs> <laughs> he has left the he has building. Left the building. And here is Neilon Green. All the way down at the 15-yard line, but there's a flag on the play, and there might be a face mask involved. There certainly is, and it's unfortunate because, because this is a great job by Henry Taylor not being fooled by the misdirection. 
everybody has this play in and you have to be aware of the fact that how far back he is in the backfield if you're even close to that face mask let it go. Five yards, face mask, on the defense, first down, five. We see Brad, Brad Scott is having a beef for the fact that he feels like it was the shoulder. Take a look. Taylor just right here, excuse me, that's not Taylor. Instead, it is Abraham. Right there, he pulls on it, but you can see, yeah, you can see the neck snap back a little bit. That's a good call by the official, but it's unfortunate on the part of Abraham because in that situation, he would have been better off just to have let him go because he had his friends following behind him. So now, instead, it's first down and five at the 34-yard line. And Neilon Green's going to call himself an automatic. He still has five seconds on the clock. Pitch out. Priester gets nothing at all. Now Sean Salisbury. Sean. Guys, the injury to Clemson safety Robert Carswell is a badly sprained left ankle. They just retaped it heavily. He's walking on it without a shoe on, very ginger. They say he's going to try to return, guys, but the way it looks from here, it's going to be very, very doubtful. Back to you. So no gain on the play. Second down and five. One of the things that Clemson needs to take advantage of here, Charlie, Arturo Freeman continues to step up and be a part of the run defense. They got a chance for play action and to go to the post. Here's Priester. And gets maybe a couple, and that's about all. One of the things that appeared that Clemson was trying to do, but in both situations, first the running back went the wrong direction. The second time, Green had it. He fumbled it. They were trying to run the option. I think this is something that Clemson needs to integrate because that can create some problems for Wally Burnham in his defense. Third down and three. Clemson has to get just to the 39-yard line. And they are just shy of the 36. A pair of 43-year-old head coaches, each in their fourth season at their respective schools. Green still has it. Green's going to throw long for Tony Horney. Overthrown. Overthrew him at the 20-yard line. Dramatically challenged. It's fourth down. That's what they did. They went with the play action and decided to go to the post. But the man-for-man -man coverage was there, even if Arturo Freeman was not. Give credit to the secondary of the Gamecocks. Kevin Laird will punt it away with Kevin Brooks standing back at his own 25-yard line. Brooks, the man on the coverage, has done an outstanding job thus far in man-for-man -man coverage. Wally Burnham talked about him being arguably their best cover guy. And now it will be his turn to return the punt. And it's a low one. Fielded on the fly. And this could be trouble for Clemson. It is trouble for Clemson. Finally, Brooks is brought down at the 47-yard line after a 35-yard punt and a 24-yard punt return, his longest of the season. Nothing worse for special teams coaches when they see that low punt because they know inevitably if the guy can come up and make the catch and run with it, he can get some yardage, and that's what happened. You're looking at Daryl Brooks. That was that would be the blonde behind the man with the mustache. There she is. <laughs> she of course is the wife of the head coach. And that's the governor's booth filled with Clemson fans. And in the state of South Carolina tonight, I imagine we have pretty near every television set tuned to us, Doc. I would think so. This is a. Uh, as the coach Brad Scott pointed out in his first year he tried to make he tried to play it down like it wasn't that big of a deal and people flooded him with calls and faxes saying you're wrong this is a this very, is a big, very deal. big deal uh, here everybody's standing <laughs> just four minutes and 32 seconds left in the first quarter and Penn's pass is complete carry hood and he gains maybe about five on the play brought down by Antoine Edwards everybody keeps talking about his physical limitations only being six feet tall 170 pounds but the one thing they did mention is he throws the ball on time watch he'll deliver the ball before the cut is made comes out there and it gives him a chance to make a move and even though he was unable to break away I like the timing that Penn has been able to coordinate at least thus far with his receivers here early on six feet 165 pounds he is from Miami Florida red shirt freshman making his second start and here is Hambrick Hambrick pulls his way inside the 40 to about the 39 yard line so Hambrick 
has shown speed and some power too. He's a big kid, six foot, 222. Charlie, last last year when I had this particular game, Clemson and South Carolina, after Hambrick went for 135 yards as a freshman, I said, boy, this kid's going to be a star. I said, this is somebody that is just going to be a star. And for whatever reason, they said early on he just wasn't able to figure things out, which afforded, afforded Blue Williams the chance to play. Now it appears that he's reasserting himself. Third down and two. Penn from the shotgun, firing near side, and it's complete to the 35-yard line, and that's going to be a first down. Zola Davis making a statement for himself tonight. Let's give both Brad Scott and John Eason some credit here. With these short passes and not high risk, they're giving an awful lot of confidence to the young quarterback early on in this game. Jerry, if he starts out by throwing some long passes and say going one for five or 0 for six or something like that, he's not going to want to throw and he's going to be a little bit gun shot. Now that he's made a couple of completions, he feels good about himself and he's moving it in the direction they want it to go. John Eason down there in the front row. There he is. He, along with Brad Scott, Wally Burnham, came from Florida State here four years ago to turn around this Gamecock program. And Penn rolling out of trouble, throwing on the run incomplete. Did wise to get rid of the ball. Well, again, showing some poise, knowing that that play is broken up at his first down, get rid of the ball and come back and give it another shot. Got to roll out to his right, as you mentioned, 165 pounds, so he's pretty quick. Right there, he says, no, 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 we'll get rid of that. There were some questions about his physical limitations and his arm strength. Well, tonight we've seen no sign of weakness with his arm, but there's been no question about his leadership capability. They really like the way he controls his football team. And he's just a red shirt freshman. Hambrick. He's got some room again. Hambrick down the sideline. Hambrick is going to score. 35 yards. And Zola Davis, the wide receiver for South Carolina, is a big reason why he was able to get that ball in the end zone. What a great block downfield by number 21. Doesn't know what hit him. His name is Troy Hambrick. That's what's hit him. Well, how can he not know? It's the same kid that hit him last year. Five carries, 109 yards for Hambrick, and two touchdowns, and a 14 to 3 lead. South Carolina once again an outstanding job at the point of attack and watch the quarterback here watch him do that Wally Richardson Penn State thing after he does it now watch oh I'm throwing no maybe not watch to this side of your screen now watch Zola Davis look at him battling great job of holding on to and blocking out DeMarco Fox enabling Hembrick to go the distance it's just great blocking at the point of attack and once again if Hambrick wasn't a star before tonight, this game is certainly going to make him one. You mentioned Charlie already over the century mark on the first stanza, two touchdowns. <laughs> At the risk of being repetitive, I'm sure he wants to play Clemson every game. Came into the game tonight, averaging 4.7 yards per carry. This evening, Troy Hambrick is merely averaging 21 yards per carry. Nearly 22. Five plays, 47 yards in a minute, 50 seconds. Troy Hammer, 14. Clemson, three. Charlie, it's early yet, but one of the one of the deterrents here for Clemson is that they emphasize the fact that they wanted to get Priester the ball 25 times. Well, if South Carolina scores, they're going to be forced into a passing mode, and that's going to alter what they wanted to do with the game plan. Tommy West certainly has cannot be very pleased with the way his defense is played, particularly his rush defense that coming into this game, Charlie, was number four in the nation. There's Raymond Priester. Now it's going to be his turn to see if he can establish some kind of a ground game for Clemson. Tigers trailing by 11. They didn't expect to happen this way. Out of a squibber. Fielded on the sideline by Marcus Martin. And Martin is smashed down at the 23-yard line. ESPN 2's college football coverage continues next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern time where the Rebels meet the Bulldogs. Another in-state rivalry with bold implications for both teams. On the deuce next week, 3.30 Eastern.
That is going to be a good looking game. I'm trying to think Charlie of the last time those two teams played and both had a winning record. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago is my guess. And Jackie Sherrill is just re up at Mississippi State. Davis Austin is now the single setback. A couple of flankers down at the bottom of the screen. And there's Austin head toward the top of the screen. Austin gets maybe five on the play. Interestingly enough, when we mentioned, I asked Tommy West about Javis Austin being the heir apparent to Priester. He said that he thought he might be better suited to fullback. Right now he's 5'11", 195 pounds. But as a true freshman, I'm guessing Charlie Lee feels like he's going to put on another 20, 25 pounds and be the kind of back that can root people out, which affords somebody else the opportunity to be a star. He gained more than five. Gained about seven. Second down and three. Austin again. And this time Austin gains maybe a yard. He's about a yard shy of the first down. Henry Taylor was in on the tackle. Vital here that Clemson gets a first down. They certainly don't want to turn the ball over here three and out, particularly with the momentum completely on the side of the Garnet and Black. As we mentioned, coming in, the road team had won each of the last six meetings. South Carolina hadn't beaten Clemson at home in 10 years. Quarterback sneak, is it going to be enough for the first down? It will depend upon where they mark the football. You we'll see where the first down has to be at about the 34 and a half. Well, that wasn't that wasn't the most generous spot, but he was able to get it anyway. Not enough for Tommy West. Well, two to one. South Carolina. How did you do that so fast? 134, 130. That was really. Oh, I see. You've got an abacus over. Okay, okay. That explains it. I went to Bradley <laughs> University. Oh, that's so. right. I forgot. Home of the fighting. The Bradley Braves. Oh, fighting. We, we didn't yeah. fight. We, okay. were, <laughs> we were rather pacifistic. Here's Raymond Priester. Priester's got enough for a first down to about the 47 to pick up the 13. Priester is one of those backs that gets into a rhythm when he's afforded the opportunity to get a number of carries, as we documented earlier. He has not been given that chance this year because of the success of Tony Horn and Neilon Green throwing for nearly 2,000 yards. But he is outstanding between the tackles, six foot one, 230 pounder. Well, Priester is a graduating senior, one of 19, leaving the Tiger program. He and quarterback Neilon Green and the split end Tony Horn, the backbone of this offensive unit, all gone after this year. Here's Green's pass, and it is complete and out of bounds. Enough for the first down, it looks like, for Lamont Hall, yet another senior. A pickup of 12 on the play. Well, what a thrill for a tight end to catch the ball in this particular offense. Tommy West, a former tight end, is somebody that mentions the fact that not often do the tight ends get an opportunity. Blocks and just goes out in the flat, and nobody goes with him because they said, well, why are we going with him? They never throw What? Wait, wait, wait. A little too late. They got the first. Hall caught just eight passes in his first three seasons at Clemson. That was his 14th reception this year. Right up the gut, Raymond Priester. And he picks up about six or seven on the play. This is exactly what Clemson needed to do. They need to reestablish their running game, and Priester is getting his rhythm. And certainly, that is what they wanted to do. Now, that's his ninth carry already, Charlie, here in the first quarter. Raymond Priester ending the first quarter for Clemson, but the first quarter belonged to his counterpart. Troy Hambrick, two touchdowns tonight. And South Carolina leads it 14 to 3. And we welcome you back to Wild Kingdom. That is a Gamecock. That's Foghorn Leghorn. I say, I say, I say, I say, pardon? I say. <laughs> and his team, South Carolina, is leading 14 to 3. And Clemson has the ball, second down, and about three yards to go at the Gamecocks 33. Shows how important time of possession is here. Both touchdowns by South Carolina, both drives lasted less than two minutes. And here's Raven Priester. And Priester should have enough for the first down. Needed to get to the 30, and he's just inside. Ben Washington made the tackle, along with outside linebacker Corey Atkins. Tommy West, his team needs a win tonight to get to a bowl. 
a loss and their season will come to an end. South Carolina needs a win tonight and then they must hope to get an invitation and there is no lead pipe cinch if that's going to happen. Priester, 10 carry, 40 yards on the night, flags fly, whistles blow, and that play has come to a grinding halt. Charlie, here we are now in the second quarter, and the last time we did a Clemson game, it was dominated by three and four wide receiver sets out of the shotgun. At this point, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't recall a shotgun snap. Yeah, yeah. Are you? First first I think one of the things that Tommy West has just decided is coming into this game, we're going to run this thing. We're going to run this thing. We're going to dominate time of possession and see if we can give our defense a rest. But even though they have increase in time of possession, I think he's very disillusioned with the fact that for whatever reason his defensive 11 came out flat. First down and five. And the Tigers at the South Carolina 35. And Javis Austin is the single setback. And Austin gets nothing. He is sandwiched by Ben Washington. Corey Atkins, Arturo Freeman, they're all there. Here's the opportunity for play action now here on second down. South Carolina has decided now they've been running but up the gut. And so let's plant some people. As you mentioned, Freeman and Washington coming up. They had nine in the box that time. Here's a good opportunity for Clemson to go to some play action here on second and 15. Henry Taylor is the defensive tackle, and he tends to just clog the middle. And so you will see lots of tackles by the safeties, Washington and Freeman. When all was said and done, they get back to the original line of scrimmage. And of course, just as we talk about when are they going to go to the shotgun and three wide receiver set, that's exactly what they go to. Give South Carolina credit. First time they see it, and they're in great coverage. Green can't find anybody. Cuts up the field. It could have been more, but great pursuit on the back side for South Carolina, holding it to only a four-yard gain. Brad Scott in his fourth season as the head football coach in South Carolina and Tommy West also in his fourth year at Clemson. Third and ten at the 30-yard line. Elon Green in the shotgun and now you've got four wides and one back along with Elon Green from the shotgun. Green has a lot of time firing over the middle and it's complete. The Marcus Martin inside the 15. They'll mark it at about the 11. A pickup of 18 on the play. Homer Torrance is the one who's in coverage, but Nelon Green just has way too much time to throw. In route down here, and when you have the in route that's this deep, 1,001, 1,002, you're looking at about four or five seconds that he's afforded to throw the ball. South Carolina needed to put a little bit more pressure on Green. They did not, and he was able to deliver the goods. Standing in the pocket, nice throw. And so now, first and 10. And the line of scrimmage is the 12. Priester tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Ben Washington. Washington, the leading tackler for South Carolina, just decided to shoot the gap there and take a chance. He's able to get away with it just catching the shoe top of Priester and dropping it. Unusual that a team's two leading tacklers are the safety. But that is the defensive scheme employed by Wally Burnham because he says those guys are the strength of his unit. Second down and 11 at the 13 yard line. Out of the eye. Pitch out. Priester brought down back at the 15 yard line by Homer Torrance, the quarterback. Torrance is the one that was beat on the in route, but everybody was right there on the option. Take a look. The fullback is going to be accounted for. There's one guy. Now they have the quarterback. Now they have the pitch man. Everybody was right on top of things. I, obviously, I was wrong earlier when I said that they should integrate the option because South Carolina was prepared for all three of the options that Clemson had on that particular play. Third down and 13 to go at the 15. They can still get a first down. They have to get inside the two. Intended for Tony Horn in the end zone, and he nearly had a second effort touchdown. Tony Horn has been the go to guy for Clemson all year long. Green buying some time as he rolls right, lofts the ball. Horn comes up. That's a catchable ball. 
Even though there's a body in his way, that's certainly a catchable football. We've seen Horn make more difficult catches this year, Charlie. Take a look, it's going to hit him in the hands right there. Yes, Washington gets over and collides, but as I say, I'm sure Horn would tell you that maybe he should have held on to that one. A 32-yard field goal for David Richardson, who's 11 out of 12 this year. And now he is 12 out of 13. So Clemson gets a second field goal. Problem is, South Carolina's got two touchdowns. ESPN 2's presentation of college football. It is to you by Audi and the all-new A6. Can one car change the way you look at all cars? And by the Frost Group Tours Life, who reminds you the three most important words are, Hey, beer man. The announcer is for the birds. And so it is 14-6 to 6 for South Carolina. Following the David Richardson field goal, who has provided all of the scoring for Clemson tonight, and all of the scoring provided for South Carolina by their sophomore running back, Troy Hambrick, with two touchdowns. Kerry Hood will be standing back, awaiting the kickoff for South Carolina back at the five. And you have a look at Troy Hambrick, who has been the offensive tour de force. For the game cop. And here comes the kickoff from David Richardson. And Kerry Hood, two yards deep in the end zone. He stepped over. He better come out. And he's in trouble. And he's down at the nine yard line. Now, Kerry Hood is not normally the guy who kicks off or has the kickoff returns. Boo Williams is. Williams has a sprained knee and thus he is not playing at the moment. So well, Terry Hood is not sure of himself. The decision making process right there the linebacker in this case number 31 Jarek Taylor comes back and tells him no but it's a little bit too late. But at least acknowledge the fact that right there now his foot is out. Certainly if certainly if Taylor could have got back a little bit quicker to tell him he would have been better off. But as you pointed out Charlie he's not used to being in that role and the result is terrible field position for the Gamecocks. First and ten at their own nine yard line but they do lead by eight. Davis and Hood are the flankers and here's Troy Hambrick and Hambrick gets about three on the play. One of the things here coming into the game is Clemson's rush defense fourth in the nation. You can see the yardage there and tonight already Hambrick of course over the century mark. They're going to have to stiffen certainly here in the remaining nearly three quarters. if They're going to be successful. Reggie Herring the defensive coordinator for Clemson in his fifth year at the school Florida State and North Carolina combined for a total of 99 yards on the ground against that Clemson defense. That was Troy Hambrick finding an alley, and he gets out to the 29-yard line. Great sleight of hand on the part of South Carolina. Everybody was anticipating when they saw that. Watch, watch what's going to happen coming over. They think it's a reverse. Instead, Hambrick takes the ball and cuts back against the grain. Clemson tackles him a little bit late, but great job and good, good opportunity for South Carolina to take advantage of the flow of Clemson's defense there and get themselves out of a hole. A pickup of 17 more, 129 on the night. Troy Hambrick introducing himself to America in a big one. And here's Penn's pass, and that's complete to the tight end, Jason Lawson. Jason Lawson, who suffered a busted ankle early in the year was able to come back they didn't think he could not only did he come back last week and play right tackle he's also playing his familiar spot tight end misdirection play and you can see he's got to be thrilled to get the ball he has been out as you mentioned for most of the season came back started a tackle it was a pretty good set of yokes for a tight end look at those arms man oh he man. can bench press 515 pounds with those hammers second down and one Nothing doing that time. Scott Moritz made the attempt and gained nothing. Let's go downstairs to Sean Salisbury and 
get his appraisal of quarterback Vic Penn. Guys, Charlie and Todd, you both talked about Vic Penn's confidence. Well, it's growing, and there's a reason why that arm, that ball looks like it's coming out with velocity. But with his size, everybody talks that he doesn't have a strong arm. What the coaches have done here at South Carolina is shorten the routes. You normally do that in training camp. They had to do it for him. They've taken 16-yard routes and made him 12-yard routes. And what he does, he gets the ball out of his hand on time, which a lot of quarterbacks at this level don't do. He's playing good football tonight, guys. On third and two. Penn fires incomplete. Intended for Shaw Mays, 85. Pretty good throw on the part of Penn, it appeared. It's a little bit high, but take a look at Mays. Is this catchable ball? Maybe not. Maybe just a little bit too high. It appeared that Penn might have hurt himself just a little bit. He's been effective there with that three step drop, stepping back and throwing the shorter out, but that time, just a little too much altitude. On fourth down and two, Courtney Levitt will punt it away. And Tony Horn is standing back at his own 22 yard line. Low kick. Horn's going to have some room. But that middle is sealed off neatly. And so Horn is brought down at the 25 yard line. It's still South Carolina by eight. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Audi and the all-new A6. Can one car change the way you look at all cars? And by Frost Brew Coors Light, who reminds you the three most important words are, hey, beer man. And if you are just joining us here in Columbia, South Carolina, the home team. Gamecocks leading Clemson 14-6. Charlie Steiner along with Todd Christensen and Sean Salisbury. And at stake here tonight, for Clemson, if they win, in all likelihood, a trip to the Peach Bowl. If South Carolina can hang on and win, maybe a bowl appearance. But nothing is certain. Clemson trailing by eight. And Milan Green's going to throw it. And he's going to complete it to Tony Horn. If you are just joining us tonight, you have missed quite a show from the sophomore running back of South Carolina, Troy Hembrick. Goes with the option route to the left, goes 50 plus yards for the touchdown. And again, great draw fake there on the part of the quarterback, gives him the ball, cuts to the outside, shows both speed and power, does the 222 pounder. And he has provided all the offense for South Carolina tonight. 14 to 6. And here's Raymond Priester who breaks a tackle. And Priester is across the 40 to the 42. Lee Wiggins made the stop after 13 yards. Once again, between the tackles, Clemson has been outstanding. In the middle, Halsey, Gamble, and Roundtree are blowing some people open. Right there, he breaks the one tackle at the point of attack, is drugged down after about a 12 or 13 yard gain. This is what Clemson wants to do. They want to put the ball in the hands of number 27 and move up and down the field. First and 10 at their own 42. Priester the single setback. And it's Priester again, and Priester to about the 49 yard line a pickup of nearly eight on the play. One of the things that's happening here is that South Carolina is deciding that they want to take they want to take some chances and try and make some tackles. The defensive line really needs to shoot some gaps. We have an injured South Carolina player at the 50 yard line. That is Lee Wiggins. Ooh, it's helmet to helmet with Arturo Freeman. Boy that hurts. Whenever you see that the first thing you think about are neck injuries. But thankfully Wiggins is okay and so is Arturo Freeman. Well in that case too it was it Wiggins actually went face to the top of Freeman's helmet. That, maybe not so much a concussion there as much as getting his teeth knocked out. Thank goodness for the face mask. Second down and about two yards to go. They've got to get to the 48 of South Carolina. Priester again this time Priester is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He is met by no less than a half dozen black clad Gamecocks including Sylvester Miller and Shane Burnham. Shane Burnham as you documented the son of the coach and I thought it very interesting that he conceded the fact that his son Shane may not be the most athletic and certainly isn't the fastest or maybe 
the most talented guy in the field, but he said he certainly is tough. He documented that over the last four years, he can't count the number of fights his son had to get into to establish himself. But establish himself he has as the inside backer for the Gamecocks. Burnham perhaps playing his last game for South Carolina. And here is Priester on the pitch out. And Priester dives ahead. And it's like he's going to be shy of a first down by less than a yard as Henry Taylor made the tackle. Now, how much confidence does Tommy West have in his offensive line? One of the things that I'm surprised here, Charlie, is that they're running so effectively between the tackles. Now, twice they tried to get Priester outside. Priester is like a 4 7 40 guy at best, so they are going to be fourth down and a little bit short. This is why I'm wondering about the confidence factor, but evidently Tommy West likes the idea that, wait, there's a lot of time left. Let's not take any chances. We're only down eight. And Kevin Laird is an average of 42 and a half yards per punt. In fact, he belted a 69 yarder last week against North Carolina. Kevin Brooks is standing back at his own 13 yard line. Fourth and one. Oh, it's a high beauty. It may be too deep. It bounces into the end zone. It will be a touchback. South Carolina gets the ball back and their eight point lead when we come back. And we welcome you back to Columbia, South Carolina. Charlie Steiner, Todd Christensen, Sean Salisbury is down on the field. South Carolina somewhat surprisingly 14 to 6 I guess the big surprise is their ability to run the ball. Yeah certainly early on it was I think they made it I think they made some adjustments here in the second half but I, I don't know why this is a surprise Troy Hambrick rushed for 135 yards and two touchdowns last year it's not like they didn't know about him but I think that the fact that he had less than 500 yards coming into this game and hadn't been a big star I think that's the big surprise for Clemson and probably everybody else in the stands and he is also doing it against the fourth ranked rushing defense in the country. And Hambrick is the single setback, first and ten at the 20 yard line. Quick pass, Penn. It's complete to Kerry Hood, and he is wrestled out of bounds, but he gained about four yards on the play. The story of the game to this point is simply this Clemson, Neilan Green, just five of seven for 63 yards. Hambrick has been the story, 129 yards and a couple of touchdowns. And Clemson may have the time of possession, but South Carolina leads, as you can see in the upper right hand corner of your screen, by eight. Is that the one that's most important? That would be the only one that's important. <laughs> Second down and six. Davis and Hood are the flankers. And Hambrick is a single setback, and with two tight ends, Hambrick this time gets nothing. In fact, he probably loses a couple. Right here, you had to know that coming into this game that Reggie Herring's philosophy was to make the quarterback beat them and stop them in the running game. Certainly the first quarter, they now have done that. Now they have adjusted a little bit. They're starting to shoot some gaps, starting to bring their safeties up. And of course, up to this point, Charlie, with the exception of the one post pattern that Hood could not come up with, Penn has not thrown the ball downfield. Trips to the right. Single flanker dad at the bottom of your screen, and Penn is from the shotgun. Near side completion to the 32 yard line. Zola Davis having a whale of a game tonight. You mentioned the idea of arm strength. Arguably the most difficult throw is that deep out or deep comeback. And in this case, Charlie, that's across his body. He puts the ball right on the money to Zola Davis. Good route, good throw. And as was documented by Sean earlier with regards to the timing factor, you've got to give Penn a lot of credit for the timing that he has here with the receivers in basically only the last two and a half games. Red shirt freshman, he came in when Anthony Wright blew out his knee in the Tennessee game. So he played three quarters against Tennessee, played an entire game against Florida, and now he's got the big state rivalry, and he is playing a whale of a game tonight. And Penn has time. He's Lost a high fly ball into the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. Nearly caught by Kerry Hood. Defense one on one with Antoine Edwards. And Antoine Edwards was very fortunate there. The pass rush is what really was able to get to him because Edwards was beat to the post. 
He's got to throw a little bit of a pop up here. He plants himself just at the last minute. He gets whacked, and the result is a bit of a pop up. Edwards is behind, but give him also credit for the fact that he's able to jump over the shoulder without interfering. See right there, he doesn't quite get as much on it as he would have liked. The result was the fly ball to center field that Edwards was able to bat down. Lorenzo Bromel hit Victor Penn just as he got rid of the ball. So it is second down and 10 at the 33 yard line. Out of the eye formation now. Whistles blow. Too much time. That'll cost him five yards. Big five yards, too, because this is not an offense that's going to take off huge chunks of yardage. Dead ball. The way the game on the offense. Five yards. Second down. The referee tonight is Courtney Mosey. As you look into the eyes of the red shirt freshman, Vic Penn from Miami, Florida. His future here at South Carolina may well ride on his performance tonight. You've got Phil Petty, who is a true freshman who has not yet played this year, who they are very high on. They're bringing in another quarterback that they like a lot at a high school for next year. And so if Penn is able to play well tonight, he will go into next season as their number one quarterback on the depth chart. And thrown on the run across his body, nearly picked off by Raheem Abdullah, 53. Raheem Abdullah is six foot six inches tall, and he needed every inch of that. Maybe it would have been 670 to made the pick. Going across the grain against his body, this is one of those redshirt freshman mistakes. This is a ball he shouldn't throw. Right there, he gets it. Has a bit of a softball. Can't quite come up with it. And this is something that he needed to do is just throw the ball away in that case. He was looking for Troy Hambrick on the play. And we can chalk that one up to a freshman mistake. Third down and 15 yards to go. And the whistles blow again. Evidently Zola Davis got a timeout because they weren't in the formation that was needed. And so South Carolina is going to take a breather using their first timeout of the first half. There's Zola Davis right there. You can see him. He needs timeout. They evidently only had 10 people on the field. And we welcome you back to Columbia, South Carolina. And the 96th renewal of Clemson and the South Carolina Gamecocks. On third down and 15, South Carolina with the lead and the ball at their own 29-yard line. Here's Penn throwing with more confidence, and he completes it to Zola Davis. And what a night Davis is having into Clemson territory. A pickup of 18 on the play, and he beat Antoine Edwards. Only a two-man route. And here's what happens. The throw is absolutely tremendous. He throws long before Davis even looks. When you get a chance to watch Zola Davis, he's going to turn, and the ball is going to be right there. Take a look here on the corner route by Davis. He, the ball's thrown now. He turns and looks. There's the ball. Boy, I tell you what, that's just tremendous timing. And it was a second ball on the field dropped by one of the sideline attendants. First and ten for the South Carolina Gamecocks just inside. Clemson territory, and there is Hambrick for 10 more yards. And there's Penn again with that jump throw fake. <laughs> I don't know why I get a big kick out of that. I just do. Watch the quarterback at the end of the draw. Now watch him jump and throw. Oh, there it is! Well, sometimes the free safeties buy into that, and they might be backing up, and that could be the step that Hambrick is able to take advantage of. Remember Roger Staubach with the jump throws? Mm -hmm. That's what that reminds me of a little bit. In the meantime, Hambrick is racking up some serious yardage. Just shy of the first down, second and less than one. Quarterback sneak. The Penn says, okay, I'll get one, and I will. Thank you. I think that he was counting on getting a few more yards than that, and here's why. Second and short like that's a great opportunity to go play action and throw it up or sweep or do some other things. Who thinks that you're going to go with a quarterback sneak on second and short? But he does and he gets the first down. 
Brad Scott, head football coach at South Carolina. Now in his fourth year, he drew up the plays for Florida State in his previous four years before coming here. National championship ring along with a number of members on his staff from the 1993 season. He brought three assistants with him to South Carolina as they're slowly and methodically rebuilding this football program. And here is Penn in a world of trouble. And he throws it up and it's nearly picked off. That would be a freshman blunder. Actually, you got a gift there because even if Hambrick catches the ball, it's about a 10 yard loss. He was fortunate that he had an eligible receiver within eyesight. He throws the ball here. What he's going to learn in that situation is he sees the eligible receiver throw it at his feet. If he throws it at his feet, it's in the vicinity and they go all the way back to the line of scrimmage. In that case, the ricochet could have been costly, but you're right, Charlie, got away with it. Tony Planton was as close to the ball as Hambrick was. Planton 96 for the Clemson Tigers. Uh, Planton is one of 19 seniors who won't be back next year. Second and ten. And Penn's going to throw it again over the middle. Did he catch it? Travail Kelly. Yes, he did. To the 19. Interesting that up to this point, Charlie, that's the first time we've called his name. The six foot 475 pounder had been their leading receiver coming into this game. 38 catches, 521 yards, and a big 10 touchdown. If he gets a touchdown reception in this game, he will break the seasonal record held by some guy named uh, Sterling Sharp. And I don't know what he's doing now, but nonetheless, I hear he was a pretty good player at one time. He's on TV, isn't he? Some network. Some really, really cool network, man. Jermail <laughs> Kelly. Ten touchdowns. And eight in the last five games. This time as the ball is loose. And I believe Clemson has got the fumble. Yes, they do. Why they would want to go with a, with a trick play at this point, Charlie, I really don't understand. Two minutes left. They can run out the clock as well as they're running the ball. There's the pitch. It's just way too high. I don't know what Hambrick was thinking, but that's just a gift turnover for the Clemson Tigers. And as we documented at the top, negative five coming into this game. That had been a problem for Clemson. South Carolina, on the other hand, number nine in the nation in turnover percentage. But boy, there's a costly one. Let's see if Clemson can take advantage. Chad Speck with the gift fumble recovery. Let's see what the Tigers can do with the turnover. Elon Green fires over the middle and it's complete to Marcus Martin. Martin still on his feet and finally brought down at about the 37 yard line. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Shane Burnham, the son of the defensive coordinator from South Carolina, makes the tackle as you look at Chad Speck. And the effort by Martin there is really huge because as a result, the clock stops for the first down, saves him some seconds. Minute 31 to go. Here's Green's pass. It's complete. Marcus Martin again, and Martin is able to get out of bounds. At the 41 yard line, a pickup of about five on the play. Clemson has all three timeouts left here in the first half. This is heads up on the part of Martin on the part of Martin, but I'm not sure it was that he was aware of it. Certainly he needs to get out of bounds. Look at that. His eye is caught off it, but with concentration, he's able to hang on. Cuts back upfield. I think I'll get some extra yardage. No, and then he cuts back and gets out of bounds and stops the clock. On second down, Neilon Green's got a mile of real estate to negotiate, and he's going to get out of bounds. And that might be a late hit. That's what Clemson is screaming about. A flag kick. Final a flag did come in, Charlie. It also, a flag. it also appeared maybe that the face mask was grabbed. You can see Tommy West jawing with the official right there. Here comes Green at the end of the play. Take a look how far out of bounds he is when he gets hit. There it is, right there. It actually isn't so much the face mask as he goes to the head, but it is going to be a personal foul, and 15 yards will be tacked off against the Gamecocks. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the line, first down. Well, take a look. It isn't, folks, it isn't so much the face mask. Watch the side. If you can slow it down, watch, watch right here at the head. See, he grabs him at the side of the head and turns him, and the official certainly sees that it appeared to him to be a face mask. But anyway, he's going for the head. That's what the official sees, and that's the penalty against Arturo Freeman. 15 yards, and now Clemson is really in business. 
A buck 11 left in the half. They've got all three timeouts left. It's first and 10 at their own 32. And here's Green from the shotgun. Ball is tipped. And it's incomplete. And another flag. There appeared to be some extracurricular activity in the backfield. Courtney Mosey has been busy here in the last four or five minutes. And Tommy West can only wait to hear what it is. Ooh. Tommy, you see Tommy West saying it hit his arm. If they're going to call an eligible receiver, his beef is in. Illegal touch of the ball on the offense. Five yards, previous spot. Wilson down, second down. Tommy West's point is that his arm gets hit. Now take a look. Does his arm get hit? No, he just he tried to pull it back at the last minute. And so really that's Green's fault for hitting his own man. Jason Gamble, 73. That Darth Vader look. Second down, 15. Four flankers. Neilan Green on the quarterback option. Neilan Green nearly busted it. He's brought down at about the 26 by quarterback Homer Torrance. It will be third down and about three. And Clemson Smart here uses one of their timeouts with 55 seconds remaining. Now, how costly is that penalty early on, that turnover? Really costly because Clemson is knocking on the door. Clemson has the ball. They trail by eight. Third and three at the South Carolina 25 after the 12 yard run by Neilan Green. And at the halftime report, sponsored by National Car Rental, it's Rivalry Saturday, and we will have all the scores and highlights for you. And now on third down, and a little more than two, Priester has a first down and then some. Priester finally brought down at about the eight yard line. A pickup of 18 on that little shuttle pass from Neilan Green. You never know what, quite, quite what to call this. Originally it was called the Utah pass. Now it's, it's fashionable to call it the shovel pass, but whatever it is, very effective for Clemson. As you mentioned, Charlie, down to the seven yard line. Now how big is that reverse hitch Hambrick turnover? And that penalty. 15 more yards are tacked on. And so now Clemson knocking on the door. Green fires into the end zone. Touchdown Clemson. Brian Wofford. Now they're going to go for two here to see if they can tie it up at 14-12. Flag in the end zone. Well, if that's taunting or too much celebration, that's going to be very costly for Clemson because that would move them back and certainly take them out of an opportunity to go for two if indeed that's the call. And here it comes. Denver, a special night conduct of the scoring team with a 15 yard penalty on the top of the Well, see, now that, how costly is that now? I mean, that's unbelievable. Now at the 17 and a half yard line, you've got no shot at a two point conversion to tie it up. And you're looking at a 35 yard extra point. And you're looking at an irate Coach West who's saying to Wofford, look, I'm glad you got the touchdown, but act like you've been there before. You just cost us a chance to tie this game up. Wofford's fourth touchdown of the season. And now a 35 yard extra point try coming up for David Richardson. Great on. He's got it. And 32 seconds remain in the half. The Tommy West team. Waff back in the hunt. Charlie Wofford is the man who's going to have to replace Horn next year as the go to guy. Horn with 65 catches coming into this game. Wofford 24 catches for 355 yards. Three touchdowns. Wolford is able to run the slant route and give Neilan Green credit. Up to this point, he'd been running all over the field. And he drills the slant route right on the money. 
Take a look at Green here. Pinpoint pass because really the coverage is not awful. He's able to find right between two defenders. Look at that. Boy, that's 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 right on the money. That's a nice throw by Green. So I'm still trying to see what the taunting was. Well, at the end of the play, evidently, this is what happens. Now watch. He's right here. Now he does the salute into the end zone. Now watch, this is the official. Look, look right Who's there. That? You can see he's going to throw what? right there. Saluting the fans? Because he's saluting. Yeah, that, that's oh, a bit much. Come on I'm now. with you. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Oh. I, I, you know, we have to be cognizant of the fact that these are 18 to 22 year old young people for the most part, and they are going to be ebullient in their excitement. They're going to be carried away. I, you know, if he. If he does the double backflip with his helmet off, then that's a different story. He wasn't all that ebullient. <laughs> my, I'm oh with you. my. Help stamp out ebullience today. Here's Kerry Hood. Hey, here's Kerry Hood. Finally brought down at the 30-yard line for a moment. It looked like he was going to bust it. Now let's go to Carl Ravage. Carl. Carl Ravitch doing one of Simon and Garfunkel's greatest hits. Sounds, sounds of silence. silence. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> very good. Should First and ten for South Carolina at their own 30-yard line. They have two timeouts left. This shows a lot of confidence in the young quarterback here, Charlie, because I'm thinking with 25 seconds left, redshirt freshman quarterback at one point lead, you're going to kneel down. Instead, they're in a four-wide receiver set. And Fires behind the intended receiver, Jermail Kelly. The other reason I'm surprised, Charlie, is because they're going to receive the kickoff to start the second half. So I would be thinking here, had Hood got to midfield, then I'd say this is a good decision. Instead, at the 30-yard line, you run the risk of the youngster getting sacked or throwing an interception. I, I would think that here they'd want to kneel down and just get this half over with. Second down and 10 yards to go at the 30. Carl Ravitch and the National Car Rental Halftime Report coming up. And this time the handoff is to Scott Moritz. And that will probably be the final play of the first half. As Donald Broomfield and Raymond White combine to make the tackle. An emotional first half in a terrifically played football game. One of the great rivalries in the country. Clemson and South Carolina. Well, one of the things here is that you've got an opportunity to see how emotional these players are. They just are all pumped. It's just pumped up 14 to 13. Now let's go to the studio and Carl Ravage. And we welcome you back to Columbia, South Carolina, one of the great rivalries in college football dating back to 1896. And they're playing like it's a century old, 14 to 13 at the half. And we have seen a star born tonight in Troy Hembrick, the running back from South Carolina. Terrific first half, over 100 yards, a couple of touchdowns. But let's give some credit to Clemson, particularly there. You know what, though? The one thing I'm sure he wishes that he had back was that errant lateral. That was something that was a big, big mistake. And you figure the minute 50 left, well, no big deal. But instead, Nelon Green takes the team the length of the field. Unfortunately, the celebration penalty did not afford them the opportunity to tie the game up. We get a chance to see this play. Now, take a look. He's going to do it right-handed, too. He throws it completely. I mean, just way out. And as a result, there's the recovery. And Elon Green just marches Clemson all the way down the field. to get a chance to take a look at the statistics. Look at the total yards there. Very even. The one turnover, not particularly costly. And, of course, time of possession, 2-1 to one for Clemson. But in this particular case, Charlie, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. In fact, it is not. Even though Clemson has a time of advantage by nearly 10 minutes, they trail by one point. And what a first half it was for Troy Hembry, who went off at uh, just a couple of minutes before the end of the half to have a little stitch work. You see the bandage right underneath the uh, right eye. He is fine. He had Ace Parada in his corner, I'm sure. I was just going to ask, you're the, you're the expert on, you're the cut man, man. Tell us about it. Uh, well, I'm the cut man for Christy Martin, perhaps. <laughs> Kerry Hood is standing deep as we begin the second half, and South Carolina's Hood is going to run it out. And Hood is 
finally wrestled down at the 27-yard line. Now Sean Salisbury on the field. Sean? Guys, talk to both coaches. First of all, Carolina's Brad Scott told me about that controversial little reverse play. He said he was supposed to be nice, a soft underhand touch by Hambrick, but he threw the old overhand jump pass, and he said he saw something that they could have worked it out, and they felt like they had a play. It didn't work. He said he's not mentioning bowl game at all at halftime, and he's very pleased with the play of his quarterback, Victor Penn. Tommy West, on the other hand, said his team's missing too many tackles, and he's not surprised at all that that football team on the other side is moving the ball, and they need to score some points. No bowl game mentioned for them either at half, guys. And this is the first play of the second half, and Penn throws on the run, and he completes it to Jacob Bush, the fullback. And for Bush, that is just his fifth reception of the year. When we talked to John Easton, the offensive coordinator, he talked about what they called an iffy meeting. If this, if this, if this. Now, one of the things that they did here is this is a play that they had not run in the first half. They wanted a little misdirection. Once again, a short pass to afford the quarterback the opportunity to get some confidence. Excellent completion there on the part of Penn. There's the offensive coordinator for South Carolina, John Eason. Very enjoyed visiting with him. Amiable guy. And very candid, too. Yes, he is. And here's the handoff to Hambrick. And Hambrick is to about the 37 yard line. Harold Means and Raheem Abdullah, pair of linebackers making the tackle. Means playing tonight because Mond Wilson, the senior, is unable to play with a knee injury. And you see number 70. Andre Spearman he was a doubtful starter tonight did not start in fact he broke an ankle on October the 4th against Auburn missed the last four games and he's playing on a gimpy ankle tonight at right tackle and here's Penn throwing near side and picked off that is Antoine Edwards and he's finally wrestled down at the 33 yard line that play had INT smelled all over it. Really did. And the reason for that is that we've been talking about, you can see him shaking his head frustrated. Here comes the play action, and it just takes a little bit too long to develop. He slips a little bit, and then there's the loft on the ball. You can see the ball wobbling right into the arms of Edwards, who makes the pick, goes out of bounds right there. A little bit of pressure, but you can see he's, he gets his foot set. He's got plenty of time, but the ball wobbles off of his hand, and it's just a little bit weak. It's just a complete pop-up that affords Edwards the chance for a pick. Too much air under the ball for Edwards' his third pick of the season. Raymond Priester doesn't get much on the front. And there is Antoine Edwards to South Carolina. This turned it over twice. First time cost him a touchdown. Let's see if Clemson can cash it in. Now you mentioned that Edwards earlier in the game was, you know, that they were hoping to pick on him because of his inability to turn his hips. Well, he's able to turn him that time. Second down, about eight yards to go. Here's Priester. Well, that play's butchered. No, it's in fact Jameis Austin. And Austin. He's lucky to get something out of nothing, maybe a yard or two. What I'm surprised there, Charlie, is it appeared that his knee might have dropped down right at the point of attack. Neilon Green gets whacked, and he, and he pitches behind Austin. He's able to make the catch right there. He slips. No, his knee didn't go down. Good job by the official not to let the play go. Austin gets a little bit of yardage out of it. Now Clemson comes up with a big 37. Two minutes into the second half. Carolina leading by one. And Green from the shotgun. Steps up. He's going to run it. And he's going to get a first down inside the 30. Brought down at the 29 yard line by Darren Hambrick. At 5 foot 11, one of the things that Steve Insminger, the offensive coordinator, talked about is they want to go to the shotgun, so that affords Neilon Green the opportunity to see the field. And in seeing the field and seeing his receivers covered, Green takes off and does what he does best, and that's run with the football. He has the great escape ability, and that drives defenses and defensive coordinators nuts. Neilon Green from Yonkers has played ball on national TV on ESPN five times. His family and friends have never seen him win a game on TV. And here's a flea flicker. And he's got some room to run, and he's going to run it up the gut. Neilon Green. His friends in Yonkers are cheering. He's down to the 15. Man-for-man -man coverage, and here's what South Carolina gets for not being fooled. 
Watch the left of your screen. They're not fooled at all. They backpedal. You can see Arturo Freeman not fooled at all, right with Horn. So instead, Green goes against the grain, gets a block from his friends, cuts up field again. It's just so maddening when you're in the secondary, when you've got somebody that has the running ability that Green does as a quarterback. Tight end Lamont Hall with a terrific block that sprung Green, and now first down at the 17-yard line. Priester and Austin in the backfield, and there's going to be a timeout called by Clemson. ESPN 2's presentation of college football is brought to you by Polaroid. See what develops. And we welcome you back to Columbia, South Carolina. The largest crowd ever to watch these two teams play one another. 83,700. There is not an empty seat anywhere. First and 10, Clemson at the 17. Raymond Priester gets a couple of yards and maybe three. Corey Atkins, the linebacker, was in on the play. Cecil Caldwell there as well. Interesting here what Steve Ensminger is going to do. Second and eight here inside the 20, as everybody is aware. These are difficult yards, and it's tough to get in the end zone from this point. But boy, when you got the mobility of Neilon Green that affords you the opportunity to do some things that other offenses cannot. Neilon Green, one of 19 Clemson seniors, perhaps playing their last game tonight. If they don't win, it will be. Here's a pass and a touchdown. Tony Horn, 15 yards. Tony Horn. Yet another senior. That certainly makes sense here. Tony Horn was able to get isolated, bumped off, and the free safety didn't come over on the corner route. Horn has been the go-to guy all year long. 65 catches and seven touchdowns coming into this contest. For Horn, his eighth touchdown reception of the season. And for the first time tonight, Clemson is leading. And Clemson, I think, is calling another timeout. And so Clemson now has just one timeout left. Let me correct myself. Tommy West team did not call the timeout. It was South Carolina not liking the coverage, not expecting Clemson to go for two. So Brad Scott used one of his timeouts. Each team now has two left. Plenty of time, of course, to go in the ball game. 11-19 in the third quarter as Clemson goes for the deuce. Elon Green still has it, throwing deep into the end zone. No. And Elon Green is frustrated because he had exactly what he wanted. Great play action fake. He had Horn. He had him wide open, but he just could not deliver the ball on the money. Now we get a chance to take a look at the touchdown. Ben Washington, the strong safety, comes up in a press mode. Right here, he's up in a press mode. He thinks that he has help here for Arturo Freeman, who's going to come over when he bumps him and heads to the outside. Instead, Freeman doesn't get over quick enough, and the result is Horn on the corner route. Green is able to deliver the ball in the seam for the score. Freeman just a little bit slow and give Green credit. He throws off the right foot to get him the ball. Take a look as Green rolls to his right. This is very difficult for a quarterback. Watch him throw off of his right foot or his wrong foot right there. He has to deliver the ball quickly and he does. Otherwise Brooks might come over and make the play. Instead he does not. And the result now as you pointed out Charlie the first time lead for Clemson since they kicked their field goal at three to nothing. And here's the two point conversion. They get what they want. They get, they get the play action fake horn here is going to come all the way behind he's got him on the corner out he actually shoves down the defender in this case number 27 Lee Wiggins but the ball is just a little bit too far and you can see Green's reaction oh no 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 no! I had him but oh just a little bit too much on the throw and a five point lead for Clemson 19 to 14 Tony Horn came into the game needing 45 yards to set the all time Clemson record single season Set back in 1980 by a fella named Harry Tuttle. He has 26, and so he needs 19 more. 
And the kickoff is fielded oh, out of no. bounds. Oh, Yet no. another mistake for Kerry Hood. South Carolina desperately missing Boo Williams. Could, uh, Hood is uh, not used to doing all that. Unfortunate there. All he had to do was just stand there and let it go out of bounds there at the 35. Instead, he can't decide whether to field it or let it go. And the result hits him right there on the legs. Goes out of bounds. Boy, costly mistake. And so South Carolina has the ball first and 10 back at their own eight yard line. Once again, that's got to be communication between the halfback and the return man. Hambrick is the single setback on first and 10. Hambrick gets nothing and looks like he may have lost a yard or two. Tony Planton, 96, is in on the tackle. Difficult situation here for the offensive powers that be for South Carolina. You want to take a chance, maybe go with some misdirection, but do you want to risk it here with the young quarterback who is just coming off throwing an interception? That's the dilemma, but of course, if you don't do anything, Charlie, you're handing them terrific field position. It started so nicely for the freshman quarterback, Vic Penn, but now a couple of turnovers has given Clemson the lead. Ben throwing near side and it's complete to Kerry Hood and he is smeared maybe at the line of scrimmage maybe by Antoine Edwards and using that route an awful lot Boo Williams coming into this game Charlie Boo Williams had averaged over 30 yards on kickoff returns just an outstanding outstanding average and his knee problems have certainly hurt South Carolina maybe not so much in terms of just the return yardage but just in the sheer idea that he knows what he's doing twice now Hood has made ghastly mistakes to put him in terrible field position Williams had a 90 yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week against Florida third down and nine here is Penn and he's in trouble down at the three Tony plant what a game he is having and for Planton, his second sack of the season. Well, again, trying to make something happen. Clemson knows they've got to throw the ball, and here they come with the pass rush. Coming around, spinning, forcing him to the outside is number 52, Adrian Dingle. But as you pointed out, Planton is the one who gets the sack and makes the play, but Dingle is the one that forced him. And so on fourth down, Courtney Levitt can't get any deeper into his own end zone. And it better be a good snap. And it is. But it's not much of a punt. Bouncing at the 35. Fielded by Tony Horn. Horn still on his feet. Has some room down the sideline. Cuts at the 15. And he's going to score. Tony Horn. 39 yards. 25 14 Clemson. Great athletes make great plays. Charlie, you mentioned that the punt was terrible. Horn had the opportunity to step up. So many times you see it on a punt like that, Charlie. The guy just lets the punt go, and it dies, and it sets down at the 42-yard line. Instead, Horn's had, Horn had the nerve rather to step up, make the play, cut up the field, make a lot of people miss. That is really an outstanding play by Tony Horn. And head coach Brad Scott. His team had the early lead, 14-3, to in fact, at one point. And now the extra point. 26 14 Clemson. Now, inevitably, what ends up happening, what ends up happening is once the ball hits the ground, everybody tries to slow down. Look at the black shirt slow down, but Horn bounces up knowing he doesn't want to give up any field position. Now he starts to make people miss. He gets a couple of blocks, even one in the back, but he's able to get away with it. Now he cuts across the grain, and the Gamecocks are just completely unsure of themselves. Horn right there gets a running start. Here comes the block in the back right there that you saw by number 12, DeMarco Fox. But nonetheless, give Horn credit for cutting across the grain and doing the things that he needs to do. Charlie, as I mentioned, so many times you see a receiver just let that ball go and do nothing about it and give up field position. Instead, Horn cuts forward, makes the play, and makes the kind of big-time play that all ACC performers are supposed to, which is what he is. And beside the great speed maneuverability he showed the vision to see that last little angle as he darted toward the end zone first punt return for Clemson in almost seven seasons did it against Maryland 
And Boo Williams is now in the lineup, standing deep for South Carolina. He's got a sprained knee, but they've had all sorts of problems with Kerry Hood, the wide receiver, attempting to return the kick. You think it's such a simple task? Well, I, I guess the issue here is what I'm surprised is that he's not going to be able to return effectively, as you mentioned, for the knee. But I don't understand what's wrong with Hambrick or anybody else. It, it just can't. It, it just isn't that difficult, and it'll come out to the 20 anyway. It's a moot point. That was quite a kick. We have the Maui Invitational covered for you on both networks beginning this Monday night. On ESPN, 2 o'clock, it's Duke and the Chaminade Silver Swords. And then at 9.30, Tubby Smith's Kentucky Wildcats take on George Washington. And sandwiched between those two games on the Deuce defending national champion Arizona takes on Boston College at 7 Eastern time. It's Maui Invitational time. And now it's time for South Carolina to get back in gear, or this could be over early. Instead, they give it to Troy Hambrick, and he gets about four yards. This is a very important series for the Gamecocks. It is on a lot of levels, Charlie, because to ask Victor Penn to come from behind 12 points here is asking an awful lot of the redshirt freshmen. I would think that at this point, they want to put the pressure on Troy Hambrick to see if he can knock off a couple of first downs and maybe break one as he did in the first quarter. The last four possessions for South Carolina, Charlie, have been punt, fumble, interception, and punt return for a touchdown. So they need to do something besides that. They have got to stop the hemorrhaging right here and now. Second down and eight. Here's Penn to throw. Firing. And he completes it to Jermail Kelly at the 40-yard line. Chad Speck with the tackle, a pickup of 19 and a first down. When talking with John Easton, the offensive coordinator, we discussed a number of people as to who has the potential to play at the next level. He mentioned that even though Jermail Kelly is a redshirt freshman at 6 foot 4, 175, 180 pounds, he feels like eventually this young man could be very special. Of course, if you got 10 touchdown receptions in college in one season, I see you're pretty special already. But nonetheless, he's somebody that's going to fill out and be a real force, he feels. He's just a freshman. He is tied with Kentucky's Craig Yeast coming into the game with 10 touchdown receptions leading the SEC. And here's the handoff to Hambrick, and he just gets a couple on the play. Seems like at this point that Hambrick is being a little bit indecisive. I'm not saying that he's looking at chasms. He isn't. But that was the beef that some of the coaches that South Carolina had with Hambrick was his inability to say, look, you know, you're a big, tough, fast kid, take off. It seemed that in the first quarter that's what he was doing. Now it seems like he's trying to pick his holes and dance a little bit, and that's not his forte. Well, the holes are beginning to close up also because of Reggie Herring's adjustments at halftime, the defensive coordinator for Clemson. That's a good point. Second down and about nine. Ed's got time firing. Oh, it's picked off. Got a man touchdown. That is Antoine Edwards. His second pick of the night. His second touchdown of the night. 42 yards. 32-14 Clemson. Well, the offensive coaches of South Carolina are second-guessing themselves right now, Charlie. They felt that Antoine Edwards was somebody that they could pick on. A converted safety, six foot one, 205 pounds. That's certainly not the kind of body that normally plays cornerback terribly with, with, excuse me, rather with effectiveness. Instead, he has been a star defensively for Clemson here in the quarter with two very big picks. And now the extra point. 33 14. 20 unanswered points here in the third quarter. The ball's a little bit of a floater, and Edwards, like a good thief, just waits for it. He's able to pick it and goes to the house. South Carolina fans 
as their team leading 14 13 at the half has been just snowed under in the first eight minutes or so of the second half 20 unanswered points by Clemson all off turnovers tonight three for South Carolina none for Clemson and Antoine Edwards who uh, six career interceptions four of them this season three of them in his career against South Carolina and two of them tonight for touchdown Charlie how different could this game have been with the score 14 to 6 South Carolina down in scoring position at around the 20 yard line and the kick goes into the end zone and turnover it's going to be a touchback next Saturday ESPN continues its coverage on Saturday afternoon 530 Eastern when the Hokies try to keep their Alliance Bowl hopes alive against the Cavaliers and then at 830 the Fighting Irish play for bowl eligibility at Hawaii that's next Saturday ESPN Notre Dame won today West Virginia what they're, they're ranked in the top 20 knock them off you're right, they do have a shot at the ball. Mm -hmm. First and ten at the 20 yard line. Hambrick is a single setback. And Penn's pass is complete to Zola Davis, and Davis is wrestled out of bounds. And fans are calling for a flag. Don't see one. Well, Davis nonetheless gets the first down. Coach West is talking with Fox saying, hey, listen, let's just make the plays. Is this extracurricular? Davis makes the catch, cuts to the outside. He stopped right there. Right about this point, the play is over with. Right there, the spike. Well, that, that certainly could have drawn a flag, but it didn't. So, South Carolina trailing by 19 with a freshman quarterback, Vic Penn, at the helm. See how he can grow in the face of adversity. Hambrick gets nothing, maybe, to the line of scrimmage. One play we haven't seen here in the second half. In fact, Charlie, we haven't seen it since it went for a touchdown early in the first quarter was the option. That was a play where he pitched out and Hamrick went for about 54 yards. Since then, everything seems to have been between the tackles. No draws, no sweeps, no misdirection. Second down and 10 yards to go. And here is Penn from the shotgun. Firing over the middle. Oh, that's nearly picked off again. Antoine Edwards did on the play defensively along with Chad Speck. And now the dilemma that is faced by Brad Scott. What do you do? Do you pull the freshman quarterback, Vic Penn? And if so, the second string quarterback on the depth chart at any rate is a kid named Phil Petty. But he is a true freshman. If you bring him in, that kills his eligibility. You bring him in basically for one quarter, he uses up a year of eligibility. And I think, Charlie, at this point down 19 points, I don't think they're decision. I think you stay with this kid. And if Petty is indeed the blue chipper that they say that he is, they want that whole year. And here's a pass over the middle behind Jermail Kelly badly. Chad Speck on the play defensively. Well, part of the frustration here for Brad Scott is certainly not, not just the fact that they're down 19 points, but they felt that they could win with the youngster if they could combine the running game with the passing game. And of course, in the first half, that was effective. Then with all the interceptions, the lights are starting to dim considerably. And when the youngster is going to have to throw 20 to 30 times here in the second half for them to win, that's that's a lot to ask. Courtney Levitt to punt it away with Tony Horn standing back at his own 25 yard line. Last time, Horn ran it home for a touchdown. Short kick. Horn catches it on the fly and down immediately at the 37 yard line. Well the third quarter action here has basically been that man Antoine Edwards. Here's the interception that led to the touchdown Nilon Green to Horn. And take a look at the punt return by Horn making a lot of people miss cutting back against the grain putting the tally on the board for the Clemson Tigers. But really the coup de grace has been once again Antoine Edwards cuts in front goes the distance with this interception somebody who was much maligned coming into this game somebody that South Carolina thought they could pick on but that 
has been to their detriment. And that is Raymond Priester out to the 50-yard line, a pick of 12. Arturo Freeman made the tackle. Now Clemson's back to what they want to do and what they can afford to do, which is give Priester the ball, let him run between the tackles, take some time off the clock, sit on that very comfortable lead. This is exactly what that man, Tommy West, had in mind coming in. We have an injury. Number 75, Glenn Roundtree looking off. Roundtree has started every single game of his career. This is his last regular season game for Clemson. And he's gone off to the sideline. Replaced him, or is replaced by Brent Banowitz. And here is Priester again, and he just gains a batting up. Henry Taylor made the play. Roundtree and Brun Bundren, the two offensive linemen. That's quite a combination. As you mentioned, those 45 starts together. And now another injury on the play. Corey Hulsey, 71. He's a sophomore, 335 pounds. So suddenly now, with the injury to Roundtree and Hulsey in back-to-back -back plays, 40% of their offensive line is banged up. Now, if Clemson wins tonight, these are the possibilities. The peach, it would appear to be, would be the most likely. Well, that's where they were last year. Priester had a, it was a game that I was fortunate enough to broadcast, and Priester had a big game. I remember he had over 100 yards, but they just couldn't seem to get in the end zone. They're battling between the 20s. Clemson is a candidate to appear in the Gator Peach Carquest and Independence Bowls. Clemson has been scouted by the Gator Peach and Carquest folks. The Gator Bowl matches the number two team in the ACC with the number two team in the Big East. So that may be a possibility. On second down and nine. That is Jameis Austin to the 40 yard line. He'll actually mark it back at about the 42, shy of the first down. See Austin a little bit frustrated because minus the shoestring tackle, he might have gone the distance. Certainly at this point, South Carolina has got to take some chances and they go with the sucker play. Just dragged down there. Shoestring tackle by number 34 for South Carolina, Preston Vincent. Otherwise, Austin could have gone to the house. He is the heir apparent to Raymond Priester. Priester came into the game with 16 offensive records and his quarterback, Neilan Green, 18 Clemson offensive records. These guys are going to be missed. And that is Priester, and he's to the 35-yard line and another first down. So the heart and soul of the offensive unit for Clemson playing their last regular season game. The quarterback Green, the running back Priester, and the wide receiver Horn, all of whom have a handful of Clemson all-time records. So Tommy West going to have a lot of work to do in the offseason. Well, if for whatever reason they do not get a bowl invitation, they're certainly going out in style thus far. Mm -hmm. First and 10 at the 35, and here is Priester, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and then he is snowed under. Well, the one thing Clemson is doing here, Charlie, is even if they do not get down, kick a field goal, or score, they're taking a considerable amount of time off the clock. And in the second half, South Carolina has not shown the ability to do much offensively. And so beyond Priester and Green and Horn, three on the offensive line, Bundren the left tackle, Roundtree the right guard, and the tight end, Lamont Hall, they are all seniors, and they are all gone next year. And it's going to be a big turnover for the Tiger football program on second down and ten. Here's Green stopping, throwing over the middle, and it's complete to Lamont Hall. And Hall is down to the 10 yard line. A pickup of 24 yards on the play. The corners, Brooks and Wiggins, finally team up to make the tackle. A little delay route for Hall over the middle, and of course, as you pointed out, they didn't throw the ball much to him, but this year they've been able to do that. Absolutely nobody in coverage. 
all able to break through and get it down to the 12 yard line. But you know that's so exciting when you block like say 50 however many straight plays 30 straight plays and suddenly you get the ball get in the open field like that get a chance. Well that's exciting for number 82. And so it's first and 10 for Clemson at the 12 yard line. And here is Priester still on his feet finally dragged down and he lost his helmet. So is his mouth <laughs> Mouth. Now see, you know what's funny about that is that is that he's able to clamp down with his teeth on the mouthpiece. Good thing it didn't take out a bridge with him as the helmet left. <laughs> you know, when the helmet came off, it looked like a flying pumpkin. There's the hit at the end. Arturo Freeman is the one who actually rips the helmet off. But he's able to say, yeah, well, that's okay, but I still got my mouthpiece on. He smiles about it. He thinks it's pretty funny. Tough guy. Good thing he's got. You look like one of those flying Walendas, you know, <laughs> doing one of those spins 40 feet in the air. On second down. Austin gets maybe a couple of yards to the 10 as the clock continues to run with a little over a buck and a half left in the third quarter. Let's go downstairs, Sean Salisbury, sir. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah, the injury to Corey Holsey, the uh, guard for number 71 for Clemson. He got what they call a stinger, and that's that old burner in the neck and the shoulder that puts the old sideline fire in the left side of your body. They expect him to return. He looks like he's in a little pain, but if this is a blowout, maybe he won't return. Guys, back to you. Third and eight at the 10 yard line. There he is. Oh. Flags fly, ran out of time. Now, Charlie, have you ever had a stinger or a burner? Not I. And you? <laughs> well, there's this See, one. I didn't have to do that. First touch. Oh, no. On the offense, five yards, <laughs> third down. I, I, I just always find it entertaining when we have those particular colloquialisms for things. It's, the one that always gets me, is, and you do boxing so much, is a contusion. That covers everything. The guy has a contusion. Oh, please. Oh. What is that? Oh, oh. oh no. Dice. Oh, Come nice. on. Oh. Samson, what, what up? Yeah, let me tell you oh, something. No. He, he, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and here's oh, Queen's pass. No. And it's going to be a touchdown for Clemson. Mal Lawyer. Oh, we've got to bring in the blowout material now. 14 Clemson. Haven't, haven't mentioned Lawyer's name much coming into this coming into this play, but they go with a little bit of a flanker screen out to the right, delivers the ball. Great blocking downfield. And really at this point, Charlie, it just appeared a lot of disinterest on the part of the black shirts of the Gamecocks. Well, those turnovers have just ripped their heart out tonight. They played them tough in the first half, and they simply can't give it away the way they have. 40 to 14. Clemson is going bolder. Well, there's somebody that's exciting. Along with Wolford, he is going to be the man next year that picks up the slack, as you mentioned, for the departed Tony Horn. In fact, in talking to Tommy West, he mentioned that he didn't think that was going to be it. I mean, obviously, he'll miss Horn, but he really feels like the lawyer and Wolford are guys that can pick up the slack. And Marcus Martin also is somebody they're counting on. Here comes the underneath screen and he just goes virtually untouched until Washington makes the effort at the two but that's just too much. Wolford has too much momentum heading into the end zone. So it's 40 to 14 and Clemson can now start thinking about going to the postseason as a lot of the fans here at Williams Price Stadium are thinking about heading toward the exits. Now what do you what do you think we've talked about this a little bit. What, what do you think about the theory of the visiting team. Clemson will win tonight barring some kind of fourth quarter miracle by Carolina and that will be the seventh consecutive time in this series and they play every single year seventh consecutive time that the road team has won because they're only two and a half hours apart 150 miles. I don't get a sense that there's a real home field advantage. I mean there's a, you're, you're playing in front of people from your home state. There's a lot of orange in the stadium. Of course, there's a lot more of the garnet and black. I don't get a sense that there's a real home field. This is this is a statewide festival for the day, and 
Boy, Carolina's having all sorts of problems. That's going to be a safety. That may be a touchdown. No, it's a touchback. It's a touchback. He never lost possession of it in the end zone, so it's oh, going to come okay. out to never the 20. Get out. Okay. But coming, but coming back to what you were saying with regards to that theory, I think part of it too is you can see the ball. He muffs it here, bounces, then comes back. It comes back into the end zone, and so he uh, he's afforded the luxury of kneeling down and getting on the ball. <laughs> if that's just, having a half a dozen guys pounce on you is a luxury. <laughs> oh, it's been a tough night. Well, you wouldn't have thought so in the first half. It's no, just in this like... particular quarter, man. It's just turned around. They have come undone. Jacob Bush with the handoff gets back to the line of scrimmage. It is second down and 10, and that will likely be the last play of the third quarter. Lorenzo Brumel, the native of the Bronx, makes the tackle. And that is Robert Carswell. His night is over. As we have come to the end of the third quarter. Clemson 40 to 14. Well to say that the third quarter has been owned by Clemson is an understatement. Horn gets one in the end zone. Likewise Edwards. All Clemson 40 14. How it all came undone for the Gamecocks of South Carolina Clemson with 27 unanswered points in the third quarter. Now Vic Penn back to throw. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Jason Lawson. It is third down now at eight yards to go. Jason Lawson broke his ankle earlier in the year. Is that Darren Hambrick? The and other that guy is so. Darren Hambrick, the linebacker and brother of Troy Hambrick. The two of them. That is Lawson 41 the tight end and Hambrick rehab together. They are both seniors. This is their last night as South Carolina football players. They wanted to get back and play this game and in fact they have. And here is Penn. He's going to run and he's going to get himself a first down and he's going to get a first down and then some. He's run out of bounds at the 43 yard line. A pickup of 21. First and 10, Clemson. Or I beg your pardon, South Carolina. Penn shows a little mobility of his own. He looks to his left. The pressure flushes him to his right. And what happens is the corner has to go with his man, and he's got his back turned. So you can see right there at the bottom of the screen, DeMarco Fox had his back turned, couldn't come back. And that's the reason why Penn got so much yardage. So it's first and 10 for the. Gamecocks of South Carolina showing some fight still trailing by 26. Here's Penn to throw going long over the middle and it is incomplete and nearly intercepted. Zola Davis the intended receiver and it was nearly picked off by Darrell Crutchfield. Now Sean Salisbury on the field. Charlie we're not going to leave the South Carolina quarterback thing alone. We've talked about Vic Penn and him coming back next year how important this game was. Talked about Phil Petty the freshman. I also talked about Anthony Wright who's got to come back from a knee injury. We'll add another name to the list when they come back to compete for this job. Keith Matkins of Charlotte. He is a recruit that's committed. He's 6'4", 185 pounds. Athlete of the year. And the, the rumor is that he's a lot like Doug Williams and he's a top five QB in the nation. Throw him into the mix as the competition gets underway in 98 guys. Amazing the job that Brad Scott has done in turning this program around and here's Hambrick on the screen and Hambrick only gets a couple of yards on the play Antoine Edwards and what a whale of a game he has had in the secondary. They thought they were going to pick on him tonight. Big mistake. It has been but again coming back to the conversation regarding the quarterback this game was more than just a single game for Penn and it would have afforded him the opportunity to come into the spring as the number one quarterback. And as Sean documented Anthony right with a the reconstruction they're hoping that he's going to be ready by the fall but they're they're just not sure. And so the result is is that a pennant had, had a great game he certainly would have been number one coming into the spring now Charlie not so sure. Now you have four quarterbacks going after the job and here's Penn throwing sideline incomplete intended for Jamail Kelly and that wasn't a terrific pass either. Fourth down and eight. Again, in fairness to him, let's not forget that this is only his second start. 
and the last two games couldn't have been too easy when you're facing defenses like Tennessee and Florida. Yeah, talk about baptism of fire going up against Tennessee coming in off the bench to replace the injured Anthony Wright then starting against Florida and then starting in this big rivalry game in front of 83,000 fans at home many of whom are heading toward the exits. That's a pretty good punt. That is going to bounce into the end zone however and Clemson will take over following the 54 yard punt first and 10 at their own 20. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Discover Car. And we have 13 minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. Clemson trailing by one at the half, now leading by 26 in the fourth, 40 to 14. And Clemson's got the ball, first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Elon Green, who has never won a game on national TV. The Pierce boys to finally win one for the folks back in Yonkers. And Lamont Hall, the intended receiver. Now let's go back to Bristol and Carl Rapich. All right, Charlie, and here's one for you. Kitchen igniting. Alabama's quarterback didn't start this one, but he's come in 14 yards later. Calvin Hall, sort of a bend but don't break defense for Alabama. They're up 7-6. Auburn, title game hopes on the line. There is something to be said for these rivalry games. Just you know, throw out all the records. Logic. Oh. And here's Priester. And on second effort, he's still on his feet. And now a flag flies late. Well, USC played UCLA really tough today. Alabama leading Auburn now. And how about that Michigan Ohio State game? Yeah, but Oregon beat Oregon State pretty decisively. You're I'm, from, I'm, you're from happy about I'm from Eugene. Okay. Yeah. You're happy. All right, just, yeah. I wanted to throw the Civil War in there into those other big, big rivals. Five yards. Face mask. On the defense. Five yards. In the run. We play second down. Even when things go well for South Carolina, they're finding a way to mess it up. Now the year, now the week before was or was it two weeks before the moniker for it was Judgment Day. What 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 is it called today with all the rivals? I guess this would be rivalry day. Now, let me make a note of that. Yeah. Well, that's catchy. It is second down and five. So you and I have a uh, a date on the first of January. On second and five. Here's the pitch out. Raymond Priester. And that's going to be a first down to the 32 yard line. Todd and I will be at the Rose Bowl on ESPN Radio. The first ever Rose Bowl radio broadcast on the ESPN radio network. And we're going to see Michigan and they're going to be playing for a national title. Yeah, but before that, that is it Toledo and Marshall? Mac championships? Uh -huh. Oh, you're not. Yeah, you're. Oh, uh, that's right. You're too. Okay. No, I, I'm oh, he's on. on. Oh, he's gone. I'm on oh, vacation. Okay. You're too. All right. I will see you at the Insight.com bowl. Okay. All right. Formerly the Copper. I forgot. <laughs> Here's Raymond Priester, and he's got some room. And if he can turn the corner, and he just can. Arturo Freeman sealed it off. And Priester nearly busted that one all the way. Now the black shirts are fatigued at this point. They spent an awful lot of time on the field simply because of the fact that the offense hasn't been able to generate anything. Priester bounces in, cuts off, and gets to the outside. And as we mentioned, he doesn't have blazing speed, and Arturo Freeman able to come up and catch him from behind. And Priester coming into the game was an iffy proposition, having playing with a sprained ankle for the past three weeks. But we saw him yesterday and did not walk with a discernible limp, and he has had 24 carries for 117 yards tonight. Tommy West said he figured if he could get 25 carries out of Raymond Priester, he'd win. He was right. On first and ten. That's James Austin. Of course, three turnovers by Clemson or by South Carolina have contributed mightily 
to Clemson's 26 point lead. That's one thing when you turn the ball over if your defense can stiffen but certainly in the third quarter that didn't happen. Three touchdowns off of three turnovers and it's lights out. A game bunch of Gamecocks. On second down and ten. And this is James Austin. Austin is close to the first down. Corey Atkins and Arturo Freeman combined to make the tackle. When we come into town, do a ball game on Fridays, we sit with the coaches and coordinators, and we sat yesterday with Brad Scott for a time. And and he was an emotional sort. He met yesterday individually with each one of the 19 graduating seniors who are playing their last game tonight. One on one, thank them for coming in. This was really his team. These were the kids that he first brought here four years ago. And here's the handoff straight up the gut, a pickup of about five for Terry Witherspoon. And Scott was truly emotional. Yeah, he was. I mean, you know, sometimes we'll talk to coaches and, and some of that emotion is trumped up and kind of an act. But when he came here, this was his first head coaching job after being an assistant under Bobby Bowden for 11 years, four years as the offensive coordinator. He had to establish a presence and make a statement for the South Carolina football program and the graduating senior class was the first that came in under him and so he thanked them all individually one by one yesterday and then he had to meet with us I thought it interesting that he had an ex expression that I had not heard before I guess it's indigenous to the south and it just goes to show that you can learn something he said that also gave him an opportunity to hug a neck is what he said and I looked over at our brilliant erudite and astute producer John Faratzis and we looked at each other. We, we squinted. I'm not, sure we I'm not sure I've met him. No, no. Well, okay. My mistake. There, there are other adjectives to describe <laughs> it, but nonetheless, the point was that neither of us had heard that. And we've both been around the block here in television and football for quite a while. But I, I enjoyed that. And then when he explained it to us, he it said, made well, perfect sense. It certainly did. Good guy. Really is. I he agree. Is. He's, got a, he's got a good program. They're heading in the right direction. And here's Javis Austin cutting. And he's going to bust it. Touchdown. 19 yards and for Javis Austin his second touchdown of the season second touchdown of his career Austin puts a great move on the corner at the point of attack he's able to break through take a look now watch here once into the secondary look at the move he puts right there just absolutely leaves Brooks he can only extend an arm and try and trip him up but that just does not do it Austin goes in for the score and now the extra point try for David Richardson. He's been busy. 47-14. With the Clemson coaching staff coming in at a certain point when it was 14 to 3, you had to figure that they're a little bit concerned. But right now it's Tommy West's opportunity to hug a neck. Well, they are beginning to scurry toward the exits. And I guess when this game is over, we won't have too much of a traffic jam to deal with as Clemson has blown it open with 34 unanswered points here in the second half. South Carolina actually led 14 to 13 at halftime. And now it is 47 to 14 as Clemson will go bowling. You know, when you look at these numbers, Charlie, you say to yourself, OK, it's 14 six, maybe just maybe if they don't have that turnover on that errant pitch by Hambrick. But could have, would have, should have. That's going to be a touchback. And now, Sh Sean Salisbury for the Birds. Guys, I'm down here with the Gamecock, who is five years old. This is his second year doing it on the sidelines. Now, he's mean. The Gamecock <laughs> team only hopes that they could have played this mean tonight. Now, he's been living on tiger meat all week long. So let me see uh, how, how much he likes the Clemson Tigers here. You know what, guys? I think he's mean. And I also wonder if I raise the hair on your neck like that, Charlie and Todd. Let me let me put it to you this way. If the Gamecock has two years on the sideline, Sean's only got one. 
<laughs> We've got an experienced veteran down there. Uh, here's Vic Penn's pass underthrown, intended for Jason Lawson. Second down and ten. One big difference here, obviously, as you can see, the yardage. Clemson keeping up in terms of their end of the bargain. South Carolina has struggled in the second half with only 66 yards. Clemson 410 total yards. But that third quarter and the turnovers is kind of done it for him. And Neilon Green will finally win one on national television in his final regular season game. Second and ten. Here's the pitch out to Scott Morris, and he fails to meet the line of scrimmage. And boy, he took a popping. Well, this can't be too much fun for Victor Penn. First half, yes. Now all of a sudden it isn't. In the second half, he's only five for 14 for 46 yards and two interceptions. Hence the reason why, if you're at home still with us, wondering why they're pitching out and running the ball, it could be the ineffectiveness of the youngster. And so on third down and 11. With Gary Childress, 99. Firing over the middle, and it is complete. To Jermail Kelly and Kelly is pretty near the 40 yard line. That's going to be a first down pick up a 20 on the play. One thing to look forward to is it'd be great to see Kelly even though it wouldn't mean much in terms of the competition of the game. See if he could get that extra touchdown in the end zone get that 11th touchdown catch to surpass the club record. Kelly the freshman 6'4 175 pounds came into the game tied with Kentucky's Craig Yeast. For the SEC lead with 10 touchdown receptions, and eight of them have come in the last five games, but he's been relatively quiet tonight. First and 10 at the 40. And off is the Lawrence, and he's got some room, and he's got a first down. Run out of bounds at the 46 yard line. A flag comes in flying late. That may be a late hit. Now you get a first down and then a hold after the play. Zola Davis, the wide receiver, was out there entangled with it. Appears Demarco Fox. You can see right there he has he has a hold of the jersey going back and forth. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty obvious there. The official caught it. And even without the holding penalty, it still would have been a first down. But instead, it is first down and six yards to go. The spot of the foul. Moritz and Mixon are split in the backfield. Haven't seen that formation all that. And and maybe that's why. A little bit of a problem there in the backfield. If you're wondering why Hambrick isn't playing Moritz as a senior, and I'm thinking that uh, the coach wants to give him an opportunity there to get in. Number 45, Dave Herman. He is from Heightstown, New Jersey. Doesn't get to play much. Went to school initially at Ithaca. He was a wrestler. And a pretty good one. We'll continue the story after this play. Great story, Dave Herman. On second and 11. Here's Penn's throw, and it is complete to Jermail Kelly. And that's enough for a first down. So Dave Herman goes to Ithaca and he's always wondered whether or not he could play big time college football. So what does he do? He goes to Clemson. Goes to Clemson on a wrestling scholarship in hopes that he might be able to play some football. Well, the wrestling program pretty much goes under and he's stuck. Not good enough to play football on a scholarship. So he goes next door down the street to Carolina, the hated rival. Only player on the field tonight who has played for both teams. And here's the handoff straight up the gut, and Moritz gets nothing on the play. You know, for a wrestler, he had pretty good ears. You know, usually at this point, no, look at the ear. Well, okay, that left one's a little cauliflower, but not too bad. And he knows he's not much of a football player, but this is his last game, and he's already got a job lined up as an investment banker. 
And so Dave Herman gets a moment on television. These are your 15 seconds, 15 minutes. And it's a good kid. And it is now second down and 10. And the pass is complete to Calvin Owens, making his first reception of the night. Pick up 12 on the play. I like stories like that because what ends up happening is the people at home and sometimes picking up the paper all they read about is the superstars you know the Peyton Manning's and the Ricky Williams and Ed Al. But, but the bulk of college football is made up of stories like mm -hmm. that quite frankly when you have a hundred men on each particular roster there are some very interesting anecdotes and the story of Herman really personifies what college football is all about. What he did not understand however was the intensity of the rivalry down here so <laughs> Crosses the street from Clemson to South Carolina. And now here's the pass over the uh, over the sideline. And it's complete. Jamel Kelly inside the 10. He'll mark it at the 9. A pickup of 22. And Chad Speck ran him out. Well, now that the pressure is off in terms of the competition of the game, Penn is starting to get a little bit of comfort and rhythm. Play action fake. Throws the corner route. And Kelly extends himself. Nice hands there to make the catch and get out of bounds. Good route. Take a look right there, the extension. Well, that's a nice catch right on the fingertips. First and goal for South Carolina. 6.38 left in the game. Looking for their first score of the second half. Pitch out. Lawrence. And he's got room and he's going to score a touchdown. Scott Moritz with his first touchdown. A nine yarder. Don't you find it interesting Charlie they've run the option twice. And on both occasions they've had touchdowns. And Moritz is a senior who is playing his last game. Well as I pointed out I'm sure that's the reason why he's in as opposed to Hamburg to give him an opportunity there to get a touchdown. And he gets greeted on the sidelines by teammates. And the first one him. to greet him was Hamburg. Yeah not a smile on his face but still it's got to be a little bit satisfying. And now the extra point for Steve Florio. 47 21. Six and a half minutes to go. Clemson is on its way to the postseason. Uh, well, Beautiful. these kids will be back for another day and another year in this Clemson rivalry. Said to you at the top of the program that you are either born a Tiger fan or a Gamecock fan. You don't stray. You are born into it. There is no negotiation. And I suspect that she will be back as a South Carolina Gamecock fan for a good many years to come, even though her team is trailing now by 26 points. And here is the kickoff. Antoine Edwards. The 25 yard line. He looked interested. <laughs> he was looking for a thing to go down there. He said, I've had my picks. I'm not going to get whacked here on kickoff. 19 seniors are leaving South Carolina after tonight's game, and one of them, does that name look familiar? Well, I'll say. That is Joey Unitas. That's John's son. And before the game, John was here like any other proud papa, saying goodbye to the college career that made him so proud and how difficult it must have been for Joey Unitas to be John's son. Absolutely. You know Charlie we were talking about this the other day that you know if your last name is Namath or Marino or even Montana you know you, you might be able to hide but I mean Johnny Unitas is not unlike I mean he's football's version of Mickey Mantle you know coming in at that particular time I mean his father you see Joey his father played in what many consider to be the greatest game ever played yeah. that great playoff game between the Colts and the Giants that went into overtime I mean he's a part of American lore and so when that's your surname boy, I mean, it's, it's really hard to have any degree of anonymity can you get the camera down so this kid wearing high tops uh, <laughs> wait a minute get out of the way Yes. yes. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, look. They're tennis shoes. Are they cleats? I'm not even sure they're cleats. At least he's got the high tops. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's 47 21, and Clemson is running out the clock as Terry Witherspoon. As uh, I find it, I find it interesting, Charlie, that even though you know you've got Joe Montana and Terry Bradshaw with four Super Bowl victories, you've got guys that have thrown for 40 and 50 thousand yards and all of the touchdowns. 
whenever you talk about the greatest quarterback that ever played the game, there are an awful lot of so-called experts that feel like Johnny U's still the man. Number 19. Johnny Unitas on third down and seven yards to go. Cut by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's something. Great story. Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Witherspoon and Austin in the backfield, and that is Austin getting back to the line of scrimmage. Tommy West now see th that's what a head coach is supposed to do he's supposed to act like he's a little bit upset but he, he can't be very upset at all particularly the way his defense responded in the third quarter give a lot of give give a lot of credit to Reggie Herring for making the adjustments at halftime as you pointed out Charlie because they were the defense struggled in the first half but in the second half Clemson's defense has been outstanding and here's Kevin Brooks with the uh, fair catch at the 27 yard line. Every Saturday, it's Direct TV. For $11.95, you can get up to 10 great college football games that are not ordinarily in your area. Call your cable operator or Direct TV. And here is South Carolina. First and ten. And Penn to Moritz. What's what's in his mind right now, Charlie? What do you think? Youngster? You know, it, it really has been a tale of two halves. Yeah. You know, it was going so good in the first half. We're up 14, 13. Maybe this college football thing's not so tough yeah, after right. all. And then all of a sudden, he was slapped in the face about as rudely as he possibly could be by the Clemson defense. Turnovers, of course, have killed South Carolina here in the second half. And here is Penn, and he slips and slides for about five yards on the play. Bromel makes the tackle. So here's this stuff called adversity that everybody's been talking about. Right? Oh, this is what this adversity <laughs> thing's all about. <laughs> And of course, coming into the game, it was, uh, well, maybe not the closest secret that his performance tonight would depend on how he appears on the depth chart come spring practice. And you have to begin to wonder about what what this performance will mean to his immediate future. The pass to Moritz is incomplete because, as uh, Sean mentioned, you've got Phil Petty who will uh, not see any action tonight and he will be a red shirt freshman coming back next year and Petty is 6'4", 185 pounds and they've got the kid that they've uh, just recruited well not to make ex not to make excuses for Penn, but again you know the the, the offense was tailor made for Anthony Wright mm -hmm. I mean that's what they put the offense together for you know it was for a guy that rolled out did sprints you know did a lot of waggles moved around that's not what Penn is Penn is a drop back passer so you can talk all you want about making the adjustments over the last two or three weeks but still it's got to be difficult and so the fair catch by Tony Horn now let's go downstairs Sean Salisbury Sean hey guys you know we usually talk about love being in the air well in the case of offensive tackle for South Carolina Jamar Nesbitt it's lack of it see beginning the training camp he came in as a starting left tackle he started to struggle early in the season coach John Easton took him aside and said what's going on there's a lot of lack of focus they thought about sitting him down and benching him well he went and talked to his dad coach Easton did and said you know he's not focused I don't know what it is maybe you could talk to him guys well a couple weeks later, all of a sudden the focus comes back, the eyes get big, and the guy starts to play really, really well. Well, he was in love, and guess what happened? After he found his focus back, coach tell me coach doesn't have any impact, guys. He broke up with his girlfriend. Not and he's a starting anymore. left tackle, didn't go to the bench, but I'm telling you, don't try that one at home. <laughs> oh, man, rough crowd. Not in love anymore, but he's playing. Pick up of a couple on the play, second down and eight. Playing and playing well. Remember, he was an all SEC tackle last year, as well as being all SEC academic. By the way, Brandon Streeter is now the quarterback for Clemson, and he is their quarterback of the future. 
But one of the guys that they're also looking at as a potential quarterback for them next year is the wide receiver Marcus Martin, a freshman from Presented, Virginia. Streeter's good size, 6'3, 200, and he is from Gettysburg, a battler. Here's the pitch out. Javis Austin. Austin nearly busted it. Instead, he's brought down at about the 31 after a pickup of 14. And Austin is the future running back of this team. As you take a look at a future potential quarterback for South Carolina, Phil Petty, who will return next year as a redshirt freshman. Did not play. And I'm sure right now as he's sitting there looking out, he's grateful that he did, mm -hmm. knowing that he has four straight years now to get it right here in Columbia. But they are on the right track in Columbia. I don't think there's any question about that. Here's Javis Austin. Austin still on his feet. He is still showing some energy out to the 38-yard line. A couple of yards shy of the first down. He might want to rethink that idea that he's going to be the fullback of the future. He might want to have a talk with the coaches and say, hey, you know, I wouldn't mind carrying the ball a little bit. 15 carries for 84 yards thus far. He is 5'11 and 200 pounds, and he didn't have to go far from home to go to school. He is from Clemson. Second down and eight yards to go. Austin and he has got the first down now the national car rental players of the game Antoine Edwards and oh what a big play man he was tonight two picks and a touchdown and he with that turnover really turned the tide of this football game and for Troy Hambrick a game performance particularly in the first half 15 carries 135 yards couple of touchdowns and he is the national car rental player of the game for South Carolina. This is very bizarre, but last year, I was just looking at my notes, last year against Clemson, Hambrick had 135 yards and two touchdowns. Exactly the same. What are the chances of that? We can talk about that same time next year. <laughs> Second down and 12. To Neil Simon. Yeah, one of those statistical anomalies that just caught my attention, that's all. Well, it is getting late. And there is only 50 seconds left. And you have any other statistical anomalies <laughs> you want to share with us? <laughs> get a bit down the bit right hold now. your peace. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we had ourselves a whale of a football game in the first half when Carolina led 14 to 13. And then it was all Clemson in the second half. And here's Jameis Austin in what is likely to be the last play of the game. And how happy is Tommy West? His team has gone to the postseason. He's already been drenched in Gatorade. And he's got that fist clenched. And they played a whale of a game tonight. As Clemson Tigers, a 47 to 21 winner. Up next, the NFL's greatest games, the Ice Bowl, the 1967 NFL Championship game. So for Sean Salisbury and Todd Christensen, I'm Charlie Steiner. Happy holidays, everybody. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.